Welcome to another Silmarillion film project. Tonight, we are here, all four of us, and we are doing what is usually my favorite episode of each uh, season, and that is Frame Story. Planning the frame. Yeah. That's it. When we, uh, Marie, when we get to just, stuff. like, mostly make stuff up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that we don't do that at other times, but uh, yeah. generally with but even fewer even restrictions. Crazier. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So we'll be thinking through the frame story, working out um, how to make all this work. And um, especially now that we have a pretty good uh, sense of the shape and outline of the season as a whole. Um, now, tonight, yeah, we'll be fitting the frame story into that. So we'll see how that goes. Quick announcements before we begin. Lots of moots coming up. Our spring moot season is really heating up uh, here in these next few weeks. So um, the next moot is coming up very soon which is april 6th um so just uh, less than a week and a little a little more than a week from now uh down in houston we'll be doing tex moot uh that's the the first one then two weeks after that um i will be uh over in the uk well two weeks i'll be over in the uk but three weeks is when the moot actually is um uh will be on april 27th in York, England for UK Moot, our first European Moot since 2019. So that's that's pretty exciting. Glad to be getting back over there again. Um, so uh, these are the, the upcoming Moots. Um, we have the call for papers for Myth Moot. Um, Myth Moot is our, uh, our biggest annual event. That's in, in the end of June. Um, June 20th to 23rd in Leesburg, Virginia. Um, and the call for papers is open until March 31st. So that's that's coming up here this weekend. The call for papers is uh, is is scheduled to close. Um, all right. So let's get back to. For, oh, man, you put in like the most tempting of all maps. Right, the one with all the annotations, right? Oh man, like I'm always tempted to digress and spend a lot of time looking at the map, but this one is almost impossible to resist. Um, can I just say one of the things I find, I'll only make one comment about this map and then we'll totally move on. And that is, I find Tolkien's interest in the rivers of Gondor adorable. It's just like adorable how fascinated he was about the, about the rivers of Gondor, none of which has the slightest impact on the story of the Lord of the Rings or <laughs> contributes in any way uh, to the story or directly or indirectly to anyone's <laughs> element of the story. Like, it's it's just, it's a, I guess one of them, t no, because even like where the confrontation with the dead that we only hear about secondhand is still the Anduin um, and Pilargear that, anyway, so it, it's just adorable. I, I just I, I I've always um, really enjoyed Tolkien's fascination with the rivers of Gondor. So I don't remember the name, or neither can I actually read it on this map. But the most uh, the the westernmost river in Gondor has a very strange shape to it that I would expect to work quite differently like the that bite in oh the, the one way over here yeah the that yeah. bite in the in the uh in the river there i would expect that to actually kind of like i would expect water to be flowing down right when it turned space. when it turns around and starts flowing north again yeah yeah like that, that doesn't make any sense to me it certainly suggests there is some odd topography in that part yes. of gondor for yes. sure yeah yes. Yeah, I agree that it's one thing for there to be a little wiggle in a river, but yeah. for it to come all the way down for many, many miles, turn around and go back north and then come yeah. back. That's that's it's a little odd. It's I mean, a little strange. It's almost like he used one of those like the, that those map making softwares that automatically puts <laughs> like in the a random river generator for you. things. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which those do that sort of thing all the time. And it, like, like, can't, why did you have to make it bend that way right there? Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, it is a little bit strange. And there's very little in the rest of his rivers that look like that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's strange. What is the I name agree. of that river? I, I'm not sure I can read it either. 
Yeah, I can't read it. I forget which one it is. And I, I wonder what that, because that, that green circle and arrow around it seemed to be pointing to that very issue. Oh, yeah. Or he wants the name to be put over there, maybe? Maybe he's just moving, because the, the circle is around the label. So maybe he's wanting to move the label on the river. But yeah, it is, it, it is interesting that there is an arrow point, pointing to the very... Um, uh, to the very um, oddity that you're pointing to, but anyway, I left think left Nui. Is it the? Is it the? The left Nui, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Does it begin with an L? Yeah. Le yep. um, Lord of the Rings project. Uh, their, okay. Their map, there we go. Their interactive map has it. And okay, of course, cool. their their labels in the same place that it is in in that printed one. It's not in the Vite. Right. Right. Okay. Interesting. All right. Anyway, I think we've done a um, fabulous job of not getting distracted by the map. So, mm -hmm. frame yeah. story. Here we are. You're welcome. Um, thank you. Uh, okay. So, there, there, this is right. This is the reminder of the frame story. Frame stories we have known. Um, and, of course, the one thing which... The issue which this raises, which I know we were thinking of discussing here this evening, is the question of whom our primary point of view character is, right? We had talked about the possibility of having Glorfindel being our point of view character, but there's the question also about Arwen, and of course, it, this makes me think of Arwen, because obviously Arwen has been... Arwen and Aragorn have both... have separately... Um, but now finally together in season six, been our biggest recurring um, point of view. And we've, so we've had two separate Aragorn focused ones and two separate um, Arwen. Well, no, that's one, one independent Arwen one. And then the one with Arwen and Aragorn in season six. So we've gotten the two of them quite a bit. We've only, we've we've had the two, the one with Bilbo and the other one with Gandalf that have had nothing to do with Arwen or Aragorn. Um, I don't know if that's a reason to do it or not to do it, basically, you know, to focus on Arwen or not to focus on Arwen. Um, it would balance her out. We would now be like 2.5 for each one of them, you know, after this, if we did Arwen here. Um, so it is a little bit, it is a little bit, the thing that tempts me most about having this be Arwen focused is that I really, my favorite thing about Nick's least favorite frame, um, <laughs> which I think season two is the least favorite, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so my, fa so season two, to remind people, was the one that was the um, the main story, of course, was the awakening of the elves and their journey um, in the first half. And then the, um, you know, the elves in Valinor uh, for the second half. And that was the Arwen frame where she was primarily interacting with Galadriel and Celeborn when she was still staying with them. But the, the primary thing, it's Nick's least favorite because it was all just like talking, 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 basically. Um, lots of conversations. There were other reasons. It's okay. We don't have to rehash why Nick didn't yeah. like it. But the point is that um, uh, what they were talking about, like what the thematic focus of that frame was, was what is the point of elves? What is the purpose of elves? And the thing that came out of it that I really, really like about that frame, in retrospect, is we we kind of took a stand on what it means for Arwen to be the even star of her people. Mm. Um, that's a phrase Tolkien uses. Um, apart from the vague sense that we get from the narrative, that it means she's like really beautiful and a high point um, you know, she's like a, a relative high point among her people and it's going to be the last time there will be one it's going to be all downhill from the elves after this um, but that's not real specific nor mm. is it a thing that gives Arwen any particular kind of agency right um, and so I really like the idea that being the even star of her people is in some sense like a role that she fulfills, you know, that there's, um, it means something. Um, and we, 
so we we began that in the season two frame and we really came back to it in the season six frame of what Arwen feels like is her job you know what 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 she does and what what her role is um that she should have a role other than making flags um i think is pretty clear um and there is not the faintest doubt in my mind that um tolkien would have given her more of a role had he invented her character any earlier than he did which was practically when the book was in proofs already so um so yeah, it, 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 her character arrived on the scene far too late to be more thoroughly integrated into the narrative than it was. Um, barring that, I feel um, pretty confident that he would have um, wanted more of a role for her. Um, but um, uh, yeah, Mrs. Manrique is talking about you know Venus in two parts, morning and evening. That's exactly one of the reasons why I think that... Um, that title, the Even Star title, is so suggestive, right? Because it's associated with Arendel, right? It's associate. I mean, it's a big deal. That's that's you know, the Evening Star is a big deal. Um, and so, like, what does that mean? Is she the hope for her people in some sense? Is she, you know, how does that work? And so, anyway, continuing to flesh that out and seeing Arwen in action in places where we can put Arwen in action without like having to change a massive deal of the history of the third age, you know, um, if we can, if we can find places, especially before, and again, this is going to get, it's going to become really interesting when we get to Lord of the Rings era, right. And we're trying to figure out how to describe Arwen's role and position there. Um, and I just, anyway, so I think that setting that up, finding ways, and the White Council seems to me, this seems to me a fine opportunity. Not that we necessarily need to make her like the leading figure in the council discussion itself necessarily, but to have her be, um, to have her observe. playing an important role. And, but more importantly, to have like this whole thing be important to her, right? Um, again, so. I find myself really drawn. It's hard to resist the idea of having Gorfindel be our main character because Gorfindel is awesome. And having more Gorfindel and getting a chance to like actually hang out with him a little bit more is tempting. And of course, we can still do it, even if we do decide to focus on Arwen. But um, I mean, we can totally make Gorfindel Arwen's like wingman throughout the, you know, throughout the entire thing if we wanted to. Um in fact, it would be kind of cool if Glorfindel is the one who, like, recognizes that she has a really important role to play. And so he's the one who's, like, making sure that she doesn't get excluded from stuff or whatever, because people might not think to include her being such a junior, uh, you know, um, representative as she is. I, I think that, yeah, why not both of them seems to be the best mm -hmm. solution here. Yep. Um, there's really no reason not to tell different aspects and sides of a story if we have characters that are all trapped in one place for the entire season yeah we can follow one around in one episode and follow another one around in the other episode and have them keep bumping into each other and interweaving i know i was very skeptical of that idea for the last frame but that's because the two stories didn't overlap and interweave very much. And right. it was, can we tell two so totally separate stories? Separate stories, here, yeah. Here, I think it would be one story, just two different point of view characters telling the story. And it's not that Arwen's an observer, of course. It's that she is the one who's invested in what happens. So right. it's, she would be a good, foil, um, a good match for her in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Hurin is the one who really wants the near nice to happen. Um, maybe not like that, but like he was wanting there to be a war against Morgoth. Yeah. And then there was. <laughs> and it right. was terrible. <laughs> it was right. It didn't pan so, out, but but yeah, yeah. So exactly. Arwen is the one who is wanting there to be something done here, and then there's not, and it was terrible. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I think that she would be a good point of view character to match some of the things that are happening in the main story. Okay. But Glorfindel so, as well. Yeah. Well, so I have 
So I'm, I'm getting out my appendix B, so I'm yeah. all ready to make sure yeah. I don't make any <laughs> any yes. howlers because I'm yes. very prone to make mistakes, especially like mixing up different white council meetings. Like right. this oh, is a mistake no. I, I've made more than once. So I'm, yes. I'm uh, yeah. So I have a, a crazy avant-garde idea that I'm not sure I even like. Okay. Um. So, f well, the main reason not to make Glorfindel the main POV character for the season frame arc is 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 he is anything about his perspective gonna change over mm. the course of the White Council meeting? Or is he gonna go from being awesome to being the same amount of awesome with no change to his <clears throat> his point of view or anything like that? Well he's a prophetic character, so the certain things that happen during the council he can be prophetic about that's not sure but that's not a change in him it, he's not going to grow as a character because no. he makes more prophetic but my my point there is not that he changes but rather that he sees where this is all going in a way that the other characters who are involved might not right, right. well let's hang on Let, let's go back a step or two yeah, you wanted to know which white council meeting we're at. I want yeah. to make sure we're understanding. Let's so, let, and, let's and get the basic the, plot. Once yeah. you establish yeah. that, I'll give you my crazy avant-garde. Okay. Idea. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tolkien let's do that. has four white council meetings that he tells us about. Yes. Um, so we know uh, that would have years attached to them. The first one, of course, when they found the white council, and then two more when they decide. No, we shouldn't do anything about the necromancer. Oh wait, maybe we should do something about the necromancer, and then this is the fourth meeting. Right. So, and this is the final meeting because Saruman picks up, goes home, and doesn't talk to anybody again afterwards. So, he was the leader of the White Council. There's no more meetings. And am I correct in thinking that this is the White Council meeting for which, in the essay on the Astari, or catch the essay of the Astari, Tolkien wrote that narrative about Gandalf blowing smoke rings? and Or was that earlier? No, that was the earlier one because... The reason why Gandalf's sitting off to the side blowing, blowing smoke rings and mad about stuff is because that's when he's like, hey, you guys, necromancer, totally Sauron, not an asshole. We should do something about that. And Saruman's like, no, no, we can just keep on keeping on. And that's why Gandalf's sitting in the corner smoking, because he's just okay. fed up that there's no action on his news. Um, so that would be the second of the four meetings we know about, if I'm okay. recalling correctly. That's right. You're the All one right. who has the appendix out. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're more like, likely to be right than me. But, I can um, look it up. But yeah, no, all right. Okay. Um, but if I recall, that's the one where the smoke rings were, is when Gandalf was mad about them not doing anything. Right. Yes. All um, right. So that would be, yeah, so we are obviously past the Erebor storyline. So we've already had the, those two back to back. When I say back to back, I mean, I think those two are within a hundred years of each other, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which for the White Council is, you know, a recent meeting. And then this one is not even ten years after that, after the fall of the Necromancer in Mirkwood yes. and the rise of Sauron. So this is like immediately on the heels of what just happened in Mirkwood. From the perspective of the White Council. Right. I was going to say, in White Council years, this is like 45 seconds after. Yeah. Like, so yeah. We just so did it's that. 12 years. Okay, 1290, 1241 is the, is the year of The Hobbit, basically. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's been, it's, it's been 12 years, which, yeah, as you say, that's yesterday. Um, and for the record since I'm looking at Appendix B right here, um, two years before that, so like right before that third meeting, was when Saruman discovered Sauron's servants searching the Anduin near the Gladden Fields. Um, Which is why he changed his mind. Right. In between the exactly. second and third meetings. Yes, exactly. That's why he says, let's let's stop them doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why he wanted to do it, right? Okay. Right. Yes. So, um... So, all right, yes. well, it's um, worth... It, it, it's worth... worth I'll just read the 2953 entry. Might as well refresh all of our memories as to exactly what he says here. Last meeting of the White Council. They debate the rings. Saruman feigns that he has discovered that the One Ring has passed down Anduin to the sea. So it's Saruman speaking at this meeting that Gandalf is quoting from at the Council of Elrond. 
Saruman withdraws to Isengard, which he takes as his own, and fortifies it. Being jealous and afraid of Gandalf, he sets spies to watch all his movements and notes his interest in the Shire. He soon begins to keep agents in Bree and in the South Farthing. So now those are post-meeting things, but um, potentially there could be... I, we're obviously going to need to touch on the Gandalf-Saruman dynamics at some point in the frame. Right, and I have no problem with doing the smoking interaction in this frame story yeah. because we're not going to show the other meeting. Yeah. Right. So and I, it's not like Gandalf doesn't smoke pipe weed all the have time. have done that here, yeah. Right? So yeah. We can, so I, we can certainly use that as an inspiration. And the idea was that um, in one of the Unfinished Tales comments yeah. that Saruman was, was taking note of Gandalf's interest in the Shire connected to the pipeweed thing. To the pipeweed, yeah, exactly. And was like, hmm, what's in the Shire? Is that related to this ring business we've been discussing? And what don't I know? So, like, yes. Saruman is picking up on yes. those hints from Gandalf, even though Gandalf's not intentionally hinting at anything. <laughs> he just likes yeah. pipe, and pipeweed. <laughs> well, yes. Really... No, no, Nick, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I think it's really interesting that Saruman, at this point... Is, is saying, I know definitively that the ring has passed down the river Anduin into the sea. How? Why? So, like, why I does think, he think he knows? Yeah. Why, 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 how, because he can't he find it. You? Yeah, sure. But, right, no, like, I don't think he thinks that at all. He's, I, he know, he knows no, he's no, lying know he from the beginning. I know he doesn't think that. I know he yeah. doesn't think that. But how does he convince question, them? How does, yeah, what's his <laughs> evidence that he presents... Like, based you know, on I've had some I've had a detector at the end of the Anduin for centuries and it no. picked up a small piece of gold going by. I think I think based on the way it's phrased, I think that he now, of course, like they all just hint at this stuff. Right. Then nobody says this. It's like Gandalf's. I can put it no plainer than comment. You know, right. yes, you could <laughs> put it plainer than that. Gandalf, come on. Um, but um but anyway, so they're always doing that sort of thing, right? But I think that what Saruman is saying, Saruman is claiming not that he guesses, not that he supposes, that he knows that this happened. Right. I think that he is claiming, I think why he convinces people is because he is claiming that he has received some kind of direct insight. Like somebody from Valinor told him. Like he's received information. Like mm. I have definite, and I have received definite information from some, Olmo, Manway, somebody. And the reason they believe him is because nobody thinks he's going to lie about that. Like, right. anybody who says like, I have received, I have been told that this is what happened, they're going to be like, well, dude, I guess that seems improbable to me, but, you know, like, it's, like, basically, I, I think that that's the card he's playing, and I think that what he's capitalizing on, because he knows he's not going to just deceive them, right? He's not just going to convince them that his theory is correct, right? What he does, right. yeah. I think, is play on their faith, essentially. Like, mm -hmm. everyone in this room, what is the one card I could play that will make everybody here believe me? If I play the Almost. Valinor card. Yeah. Yeah. If I Almost play the so. card, okay. if, right, exactly. If I if I say I've had a vision, I had a dream. It was it was sent. I was to, I've been informed mm -hmm. that mm. this is what happened. Um, and if he can sell that, if he can make them believe that he had that experience, they'll buy it. Mm. And I can't think of anything else that's going to convince yeah. them. And I get the, I I don't remember. I I the like way the that, the way that Gandalf frames it the way that Saruman frames it in Gandalf's quotation the the certainty of the knowledge that he claims I, I can only have that kind of source like there is no way that experimentally or you know through research yeah. or exploration he could possibly achieve the level of certainty that he claims um, right and the very fact that they tend to be cagey in talking about this stuff mm. right kind of works to his benefit right because he doesn't have to say Olmo told me, or I had right. a dream, or I had a vision. He could just say certain things have come to my attention. Right. I have been. I don't, I don't want to say any further. About I have received the else. knowledge that I have been assured that or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he can use the right, passive just, voice and yeah, yeah. Right. He can he can vaguely hint at it, and then when someone's like, "Wait, what do you mean?" He's like, "Well, you know, we don't speak of these things, but it's in <laughs> right. the sea, and right. you know, Olmo would know." 
And it's like, oh, well, yeah, Alma would know. Alma would know. Well, <laughs> and I, I think he should refrain from naming anybody in particular because that's really risky. Because It's if... riskier. The whole thing is really – I mean, it's a oh, very yeah, risky course. gamble. Right, yeah, the whole thing yeah. is very risky. But level. as long as he has some level of plausible deniability right. <clears throat> about where the messaging came from, he could like if somebody like just happens to have had communication with uh, with Olmo and checks it uh, and checks out his story, he can be like, Oh, I I didn't say Olmo, you know. Like, right. Right. And as and um, it is true that Gandalf is all or in the dream guy. Like you gotta be a little careful what you claim you've thought a dream. Mm. <laughs> When talking right. to Gandalf. But at the same time, in another sense, that makes it more plausible. Like, what's Gandalf going to be like? No, that never happens. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, right. That's right. I don't believe in that kind of crap. <laughs> like, Gandalf is going to say that. So, so yeah, but but but, but I hear you. He, he, like, he couldn't, it would be probably unwise of him to, like, explicitly play, you know, say Irmo sent it, right? Because Gandalf might be able to mm. fact check that, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Theoretically. Yeah. But, I guess yeah. you're you're right. Like it has to be something like this. Otherwise, why would they believe him? Uh, right. they, yeah. Sort of makes them seem extremely derelict in their duties. Right. If they're, well, uh, it's it's such a confident claim that it, it just yeah. it begs. Excuse me. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and remember that Gan by Gandalf's testimony, which Elrond then supports, like Gandalf and Elrond both testify to the council. Not mm. just that they bought this, but that they didn't question it. Like, Gandalf believed this so completely mm. that it never occurred to him. Like, he, it's one of the reasons he's so late in detecting the ring. Yeah. Because he's doing process of elimination, but he believes that's already been eliminated. So he's, like, working down what else could it possibly be since I know it can't be the ring. Um, mm. So, yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's... and. And, and again, Elrond also was deceived in the same way. Like, they, they completely accept um, that. And again, yeah, there's very little, um, uh, there's very little, I think, that is going to, again, if he had just said, you know, according to my research, you know, the preponderance of the ev evidence suggests that the ring has rolled down the river to the sea. Gandalf is not going to cross that off his mental list when he's doing process of elimination. Mm -hmm. He might factor it in, but, yeah. you know, it would still be on the table. But it's not on the table for him. That's why he, you know, is only forced to this. Yeah. I've, I've, I've yeah. made this before, and I forget. I think it was Tom Hillman who suggested it when we were talking about this and exploring the Lord of the Rings now years ago. Um but the parallel that Tom suggested, which I think is very, very apt, is that it is like it is as <clears throat> if a junior faculty member turns up something in their research, which seems to suggest that the chair of their department, who is also a global, like globally famous scholar in the field, has been fabricating his research. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you did that, if you came across evidence which suggested that your senior colleague and boss, who is the global expert in your field, accepted by everyone, if you come across evidence that they've been falsifying their data, you're going to, like, first you're going to probably dismiss it as a mistake on your part. Then you're going to be like, I need eight forms of validation of this data before I'm even possibly going to talk about it in private to anybody, right? Um, and mm -hmm. that seems to be where Gandalf was with the ring, right? When he didn't, like, he, at first it never occurred to him. And then he, like, when it did occur to him, he was like, let me think about this really, really carefully and collect, you know, more and more data till I'm 100% sure. And even then, I'm not going to talk about it to almost anybody, right? Um, I, 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 that parallel um, j just really struck me as extremely apt for Gandalf's situation. Anyway, some of this is a little bit apart from the situation, um, but um, uh, and no, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, Angel House is asking a really good question here. Um, would Galadriel, with her telepathy, be able to figure out Saruman is lying but choose not to tell? Um, no, because I don't think she can. Um, I, I just, I don't believe, um, we know that Galadriel is willing 
to use her telepathic abilities intrusively, right? Um, I cannot imagine her doing that at a White Council meeting with other members of the White Council. Right. It's one thing to test Certainly the not to Sauron. of the company of Saruman, the White Council. Saruman, yeah. Saruman, yeah, exactly. But, like, to do that to somebody else on her level who knows what she's doing, like... Yeah, and even on her level, he's a Maya, like... <laughs> <laughs> right, like, right. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, mm. uh, I mean, we will have to work if he were resisting it. Right. Um, we, we, and we'll and have he to would have that. know. He would certainly. He would know, know that she was she... trying. Yeah. And and that would and like, there's no way that Saruman, yes. even if he was telling the truth, would allow her to do that. He's just yeah. not that kind of guy. No, he wouldn't let her. She would, I mean, it would, that's like an act of war. I mean, like, she, she yeah. wouldn't, I well, mean, not quite an act of war, but it would be I a mean, very big deal. The whole against your will thing, yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll have to have a, a deeper conversation about the Osanway Kenta stuff to figure out how yes. we're going to be handling that in some film. Because there obviously have to be limits. And it's not always, um, you know, unwelcome, obviously. Yes. Celeborn, Galadriel, Gandalf have their little chit chat when they say goodbye. Yes. Um, which yeah. is going to be in the area around Eregion. So, same place. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, it, it's not always a unwelcome thing. But if you're trying to, like, call someone out as a liar, it, it, there's a little bit of antagonism there. <laughs> yes. The forensic application of the Asanwe Kenta is a totally different situation than, um, like, to use, try to use it as a lie detector or try to use it to ferret out <clears throat> the truth, you know, where the truth is being hidden. Um, talk, the, the, I mean, talking stuff about unwilling, you know, if you close your mind, it's very absolute. Like, I mean, he's very, he speaks very, very strongly about how impossible it is to force someone's mind if they don't agree. Even if you think about the, of course, the, the famous scene of her testing the minds of the company of the ring when they arrived, even there, like, think of that situation. They're presenting themselves to her, right? She is the queen. They are, they have come before her. They are greeting yeah. her. Like, they're, they've opened themselves up to, yeah. like, they're appearing before her throne, right? Yeah. That she looks upon them. Everyone would expect a monarch to study them externally, right? She's studying them internally as well. They're not expecting mm. that, right? Is it a little bit intrusive? Yes, it but is. is it, you but would expect to be searched for to sure be under those yeah, circumstances. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like they would want to know everything you had on you. Like there's no <laughs> Right. Right. It's like a metal detector. But yeah, no right. exactly, exactly. But but I, the point is like the frame of mind with which you would be coming before a, a, you know a sitting monarch in that kind of a situation right. is one of of openness to some extent at least, right? Mm. Um or at least recognition that it is appropriate for you to submit, which is why I think she could do that. They didn't close their minds to her. I mean, it's like, clearly they didn't close their minds to her. It wouldn't have worked. Right. Um, we also get anyway. that scene from the point of view of people who don't know how this stuff works and wouldn't right. necessarily be finding it super easy to close off their minds if they decided they didn't like it anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, like Sam is just like, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did not enjoy that one bit. <laughs> right. Yes. But, but it's not like he knew how to say no, thank you. Right. Either. Exactly. So. I wonder, I mean, this is a, a, you know, it's one of those unanswerable what if, que not what if questions, but um, Boromir's declaration of being mm. uncertain about this elvish lady and her purposes. Right. Um, what I wonder is, would Boromir's mind have been closed had she had a second go? And I think it might have mm -hmm. been, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. because yeah. of his attitude afterwards. Sam's right. not so, right? Sam would not have enjoyed it, but but I don't think he would have been closed in that way. Anyway. I don't think he would have felt like it was okay to close off his mind to her. Like, I yeah. feel like he would have felt like it was rude. I mean, and, there is and, a, an implicit rebuke, and I, I felt as if I hadn't got nothing on. Right, like yeah. that's not appropriate. <laughs> right, yeah. like he, he's not gonna, you know, he's not gonna show up naked in front of the queen. Right, he does not. Mm. He, he that's yeah. Again, rebuke is the wrong word, but it's uh, um, yeah, it's not wholly mm. okay. Anyway, sort of digression, but it is relevant. It is something yeah. for us to to think yeah. about, especially people are going to be thinking about it with Goa, especially since Marie, as you said, the the primary example of telepathic 
activity that we have in the Lord of the Rings is among several of the people who are going to be sitting here in this room. Right. Um, right. We are putting that, Gandalf, yeah. Saruman, Gladriel, Elrond. Yes. All together in, in a room. In the room together, yes. Yeah. Not I mean, to mention the fact... We could put Council if we wanted to, I guess. They, they, they probably wouldn't disinvite him. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the, um, they... Um, uh, I, I was going to say, this is... And then, of course, we have to add the fact well, you know, that given that Peter Jackson made telepathic communication a kind of big deal, in, especially in the Hobbit films, right, with mm -hmm. how they were communicating. Um, so it, for that reason also it is yet another reason why it's likely. It would be likely to be on people's, but it would be foolish of us to just ignore it. So, mm. um, mm. so, okay. so here's, here's my crazy idea. Okay. What if instead of having a single POV character for the frame of the season, what if each episode... So here's the really avant-garde suggestion. Okay. What if each of the episodes centers on the point of view of, of a different character, but it's not even necessarily different scenes? We like, do the same just, scene 13 times? Well, that maybe awesome. not. No, 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 no. no. That's, that's a little too far. But, like, there's overlap, right, uh -huh. between them. And, uh -huh. and, um, and it's just that we could even utilize this telepathic communication because not everybody's privy to everything that's being said at the same time. Yes. So that's possible. Um, where it would still be interesting, you'd, you'd be filming it from different angles. So, and of course, like I say, it wouldn't necessarily just be the same conversation repeated thirteen times. It would be different conversations, and not always the and and while there's probably overlap, it's not the same time frame necessarily. The other thing, <clears throat> the thing that I think could enable this to work is that this frame is chock full of familiar characters, right? If we were doing a scene with like a bunch of comparatively obscure <laughs> characters, right? I think it'd be harder to pull off. Yes. Oh yeah. But we're talking about Elrond, Galadriel, Saruman, Gandalf, even Gorfindel, <clears throat> right? Arwen. These are not obscure characters. So if we approached these things from different ones of their perspectives, um, um, I mean, again, even cared in the shipwright. They're all fairly distinctive. Like, so the big, so, the big risk. The, the reason it'd be hard to follow is if you couldn't like keep the context or follow right, the thread. Right. Right. But since, but if that, if that's not yeah. super important, even if the actual right. conversation that's going on around the table isn't that important, then the context is not actually entirely important yeah um and you can have you know in and in part of the scene like earlier on in the in the season glorfindel leaves the room because somebody comes in and speaks to glorfindel off to the side and he leaves the room and then when the pov switches to glorfindel we find out that he's going off to meet with aragorn who's right. been patrolling right. it like there's a couple of, there's a few really interesting things that you can do yeah. there yeah um i'm i again i'm not even sure i like it because as you say it, it could end up either it could either end up really repetitive or really confusing right there's uh, some planning that needs to go into making an idea like that work um yeah. so as long as it thematically works we can probably mm. pull it off uh the theme of course is to go from amdir to estelle right and <clears throat> the Amdir that is falling apart in the main storyline is, oh look, fighting Morgoth didn't work out the way we thought it might. Yeah. Um, in this one, it's the, oh, uniting to fight Sauron didn't work out the way we thought it might. Right. Um, so we would need to land on the yeah. character who is going to have that realization yes. in the last few episodes there mm -hmm. to fit in with the day shall come again right thing. yeah so, so if you if you focus the first time around on arwen and then in the last episode focused on her again right so there are basically three acts in this season mm -hmm. so
So if we followed a set of characters through the first four episodes, mm-hmm. then we had four different points of view in the in the first act. We could then repeat those four characters over the next five episodes mm. and then come back again to those four characters in the final uh, battle episodes. Right. Right. And that way we'll have seen a progression with each of our four point mm. of view characters. You'll notice that I've whittled it down from 13 to four by that suggestion. Yes. <laughs> but at least now we have a story. <laughs> with right. The beginning, a middle, right. and an end. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I like this, but let me back up again because I'm just realizing something I've never realized in my life that I don't actually understand what happens at this council. So, um, we're, to- I'll read I had again. a, I had a sudden realization while we were talking about this. I'll tell you while you're looking the thing up, I never realized that Aragorn fills the same role to the Dunedain that Arwen fills to the elves because he also is like the last image of the Numenorean kings of old before Mm -hmm. that kind of dwindles. Yeah. I'd never, until you were talking about Arwen, it never occurred to me that the two of them are are very linked in that way. Right. Um, Okay, so here's what I mean when I say I don't really understand what happens at this council. That is, I understand what occurs. I understand the entry. What I don't understand is from the point of view of like the person who's making the agenda... Right. What are they talking about? What are they talking about? And but most importantly, where do they end? So they're yeah. like, okay, we've got to do something about Sauron. Hey, let's talk about the Rings of Power. And this leads to Saruman saying, okay, everybody, I have inside information. The Ring of Power is in the sea. At which point, what? They're all I, like, yeah, they move on from there for okay, sure. Okay, so now we just leave. Or like, I mean, like, there's no plan. No plan emerges from this. Yeah. No action yeah. comes. Right. So and why why not? Like, what on earth is accomplished? What were they? Right. A, what were they trying to accomplish? B. What if anything did get? Did they emerge from this feeling that it was a failure? Is that why they canceled yes. it? Was, yes. Was it like this was pointless and a waste of there's, everybody's time? The White yeah. Council is dead. There's a few things that. Um, Gandalf said, had said in other places that he was worried about the dragon and he was worried right. about um, Sauron having the ability to attack Lothlorien and Rivendell back in the day. So like during the time when the White Council was active, I'm not sure that four meetings over several hundred years is active, but <laughs> whatever. It depends when on it your was standards. Exi- in existence. Um, his concern was that the rise of Sauron was actually going to have the ability to like destroy everything yeah if we've now established oh look the dragon is no more and yeah sauron's in mordor and that's concerning but he doesn't have the ring and he's not going to get it says saruman so you know how bad can he be without that i guess and then you could take him down with regular military means at that point speaking of military means who's gonna get attacked first the answer is not the elves yeah it's Gondor. Nobody it's in this room. Rohan. Right. Nobody in so this nobody room. at the meeting is actually under threat from Mordor. So is their conclusion. They conclude that he's, yeah, scary, but not actually a current problem. Okay. So this is like a failure on so many levels. So like, um, <laughs> I know you were going to hate that answer. <laughs> but so, I mean, clearly it, that's. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's a failure, not your but, failure. But I think that that's, I mean, I think that that's really the strength of this as a as a mirror for the for the near knife and the the position of okay, our hope is not in the thing that we're going to do right now. The hope is in the fact that Morgoth and then later Sauron is but his instrument. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, okay. Um, right, I see um, Angel is saying the topic is the rings, what happened to them. Yeah, but it's not an academic symposium, right? I mean, like, right. it's it's not just a, hey, let's get together and discuss a topic and then leave. This is the White Council. And remember, what's the point of the Astari in the first place? Mm-hmm. To oppose Sauron. Like, they didn't just come right. here to spectate. Even if yeah. the elves are like, well, it doesn't affect us. And do we have time to leave? Yep, we have time to get to the harbor. So 
what do we care? Like, even if that's what the elves say, which is not <coughs> laudable, and which Arwen, as we have been constructing her, would take, uh, uh, you know, would take umbrage with, right? right? Um, nevertheless, like, clearly Gandalf can't be down with that plan. And nor should any of the Astari be down with that plan, right? Um, right. Um, and there's got so. Okay. Would so we, one thing. Would Sar- we be building towards like cross purposes? So, like, yeah. one so of them, Saruman's yeah. takeaways could be, yeah, we're gonna need military might and strength and like fortresses in the near time future. For, fortresses, time to make one right here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the whole he goes and fortifies Isengard, like obviously in hindsight, that feels like the beginning of his betrayal. But at the time he can just be like, I'm yeah. helping fight the fight. Yeah. Like yeah. that. We agreed that things need to be done. I'm taking the steps to do a thing. Right. So what the, the problem could be that their leadership is not willing to support a, an offensive push against Mordor. Right. Yeah. And nobody, uh, the the others can't really agree on an actual course of action. Right. Like, because I can't imagine that Galadriel is willing to march, for example, for all the fact that she might support Gandalf. I don't think she's willing to march unless there is a clear indication that her people are going to actually be in harm's way unless she does um and she's okay there are only two reasons um well i guess three i'd combine two of them um not to do anything about Mm. being the rise of sauron so they know sauron is there they've already Mm. done the necromancer thing right yes so this is openly sauron this is openly Sauron. He's declared himself. This is this is Sauron. They know this. Um, the only two reasons to sit and do nothing and not bother about Sauron are if you don't care or if you don't believe that it really is Sauron or that he is any threat. Like, like basically, if you doubt the threat of Sauron for some reason... Like, this isn't actually mm. going to be a problem. I don't think we need to worry about this, right? Um, or you don't care because you're just going to leave. Again, like, I look, yeah. as long as he's not so, between me and the Grey Havens, whatever. I don't care. Or so, third, that you're a fool. Like Okay. It, so to, in defense of elves being elves, um, the philosophy to this point has been so we will make a haven in Rivendell and the elves will be safe there. We will make a haven in Lothlorien. The elves will be mm. safe there. I will make this haven at the havens and there will be ships and then the elves can go there. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I will make this haven in Gondolin. I will make this haven yeah, in Argothrond. Yeah, yeah. The elves like, here's my safe spot. Let's put all yeah. the elves in the safe spot and defend it has been their and, go-to for a long time. And so also, even if Sauron is very scary and an actual real threat, it's like, okay. This is how we time deal re- with that. Time to reinforce the Haven. Yeah. And can the Haven withstand an attack from Sauron? And and also to say that they're doing nothing. Like, the Shire is not doing nothing. I mean, consciously, they're doing nothing, for sure, right? But <laughs> even in their very existence and doing what they do every day, they're not actually doing nothing. No, I'm not saying They're living that. their lives. I mean, yeah, elves but singing tra is not doing nothing. Right. But it isn't doing anything to prevent the rise of Sauron or the... I mean... Or the... Or, there, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Is there, is there an extra possibility here that they they know that anything, anything proactive and militaristic that they might do will not work? Is there sort of, you know, like they're... Like, in the Lord of the Rings itself, by the time we have the council, there already seems to be this sense of like, um, the only thing that's going to work is like a moonshot of destroying the ring. And like, and also that, that, yeah. that it doesn't seem to be our job. It's like nobody yeah. here is actually doing it. Apparently it's somebody else's job, this random hobbit. <laughs> so obviously, I mean, I don't think they, they shouldn't know that 
to that level yet, but maybe there is already a premonition and we could, this connects it to the near Nyeth in the sense of like, we've seen this before, it didn't work. Um, you know, how many times are we going to go to war, fight the bad guy, a bunch of people die, and then it turns out that they just come back. And maybe there's a sense of like, well, we don't know what to do, um, especially if the ring's missing, but what we know for sure is war is not the answer and it's not going to well, work. I, I think that I think you're kind of onto something because I think that militarily they do not actually have the no. strength. They can't invade Mordor. No, they right. would need Rohan and Gondor's help for that. And I think that there's a there's a kind of a diplomatic crisis. Probably not even there. in 2953. <clears throat> could yeah. so, they have the strength to I mean thinking yeah. about the relative state of weakness of Mordor in 2953. Presumably right. the elves on their own still could right. not do it. Um, as far and as And they the... would have to essentially invade Rohan and Gondor to get there, which may not be something that so what's Gondor is okay with. In Rohan and Gondor right now is regime change. Yeah. The very elderly kings of Rohan and Gondor are dying right about now. Right. <laughs> like this right. year. Um, during this right. council, in fact. And um, I mean, okay, I have to check the dates. It might be Meanwhile, the year before, the year after. Gondor. Yeah, yes. yeah. So yes. Um, so Exelion II is taking the throne of Gondor from his aged father, Turgon of Gondolin mm. or of Gondor, not Gondolin. Yes. Um, not that Turgon. Yes, yes, other Turgon. And yeah, we we know it's the steward, not the steward, king. not king. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. King of Gondolin, steward Lord of, of Gondor. City. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway. The main thing that Ecthelion is going to do is create a court where people come from other places and become knights of Gondor, and right. he's going to build up the strength of Gondor, which suggests that maybe it's not there yet. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't know what Turgon is up to in the last years of his reign, but probably not building an army to invade Mordor. Well, you right. get the sense that Gondor, by the time we meet Gondor at the end of the Third Age, you kind of get the sense it's kind of almost evolved into a group of city-states, like closely tied city-states. But, the, like, you know, the Knights of Dol Amroth seem almost completely independent of the, Gond of the Gondor, the Minas Tirith military arm. Like, they seem almost autonomous. Well, that, I mean, that's part of the political history. The Prince of Dal Amroth has a well, lot of yeah. autonomy. Right, right. That's fair. But, uh... but the point is, it's not like the steward can just say, hey, everybody, time to go fight very easily. He can do it, mm. clearly. I mean, Denethor does call. Yeah. So and maybe does... Gondor itself doesn't yeah. have the strength to actually invade. Mortar. I mean, they don't in in the you know they don't have the strength to do it later after you right. know. But bolster. again, <clears throat> when uh, Sauron returned to Mordor mm -hmm. eleven years before mm -hmm. this, and he declared himself openly two years ago, right, right. So it's news. And is beginning the rebuilding of Barad Dur in twenty nine fifty one, two years prior to the council meeting, <coughs> right. Um, so, um, again, that means, like, yes, Gond I'm, the point I keep wanting to come back to is Mordor is 100% is absolutely as weak as it will ever be. Yeah. Right, because right, it's brand I mean, new. It's brand new, right? Like, now, Sauron isn't going, Sauron's a good planner, right? He's not going to openly declare himself while he's still absolutely helpless. Right. No, he has ring rates and an army. Right, yeah. exactly. He's built an army already. Um, and he's in the but... most for heavily fortified country in, you know, on the continent. Sure. But still, I cannot imagine nobody at this White Council even suggesting, you know what, guys? If we attack now, we've got a better chance than we'll ever have. Clearly, our move should be let's <laughs> let's go and try. yeah gondor might be a mess things are sticky down in gondor and rohan their kings are dying whatever 
but let's in these next five years or whatever, right? Let's try to put together, you know, the really last alliance yeah. and go in there while Sauron is still putting stuff together. And I right? think that's Because Gandalf's... it's going to get worse. This is our yeah. last chance. Yeah. And I think that's Gandalf's call. Like, that's what he would want to do. Because he would report on what he saw in the South. Right. Of Sauron's recruiting. So yeah. his armies are only going to grow and they might grow rapidly. If we do yeah. this yes. now, it's going to be different than if we do it later. Right. It's going to be hard, but it's never going to be easier than right, right. now. Yeah. So I think that's and if the... we delay, it's over. Yeah. So, so that's the Omdir thing. Is we can totally do this, you guys. We can put together a big enough army right. to take out baby Sauron right. and it'll be fine. And then that doesn't happen. And it's like, well, now what are we waiting for? Right. And someone with like Elrond or Glorfindel has to be like, well, totally no, when we see it, you guys. But we're going to mm. wait for something that'll tell right. us it's yeah. the right time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Saruman's plan, I think, is probably, well, okay. I have a better idea. Let's fortify the north. We don't have control over the armies that we would actually need to do the fighting and dying. You know, we've tried to, and I mean, we don't know what the political state is between Gondor and the elves at this time. It could be terrible, you know, and he could say something to the effect of, you know, like we've tried talking to, to Turgon. That's a non-starter. <clears throat> right. Who gave him the keys to Orthanc? Baron. Yeah. So he at least had a good relationship with the steward a little while ago. Right. Yeah. Sure. But, you know, the the new one is no wizard's pupil. Yeah, yeah. No. Shall we say? No. Yeah, and that that would that was still a long time ago by Yeah. Yeah. Um so, Yeah. And and Here's the key to this tower that we're not using out in the middle of nowhere is kind of a far cry from let me pledge all of my, you know, the blood of and and lives yeah. of my people to Yeah. Yeah, I think fight this enemy nobody has actually heard from in years. Yeah, but I, that's the thing is I think that the call to war <coughs> war involves yeah, whoever agrees to that is agreeing to have a whole army go get slaughtered. Yeah. And is that really where they are? Apparently not. So Gandalf can say, yeah, guys, you should totally go do this. It's not like Gandalf has an army or people. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and, and, and also like none of the humans that are alive have the same memory of what happened as everybody in this room. Like mm -hmm. all these people were there. At I mean, the last the, the Asari weren't there obviously, but they knew what happened. They were alive. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have a memory of what happened that is not shared by the humans in Gondor, for example, mm -hmm. you know, who may be significantly more resistant to, all right, look, we've had the border with Mordor under control for generations now. Sure, there's orcs out there. We're not that worried about it. We're not going to go into that pit to drag out some warlock hiding in a tower. Right. You know. Um, okay. So here's my problem. Um, I'm imagining myself as a viewer, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm imagining myself as a slightly less tolerant viewer than I probably would actually be. But as a slightly less tolerant version of myself, mm. um, I'm going to have a hard time swallowing the fact that everyone who opposes the obvious sense of, yes, there are obstacles. Yes, there are difficulties. But if we don't do something now, we're hosed. Like, like, give Someone's me. Someone's got to say that it's already too late. Okay. Like the whole, we should, we need to act now. It's like, okay. That's an argument can, I could take. But can like we the, actually muster the strength to Let's not do something because we don't care. Like, essentially yeah, like don't care it's the wrong note, no obviously. but if it even smells like that right like, we need to have um, reasons why they can't yeah. and the size of an army that elrond can muster pretty small like it's mm -hmm. got glorfindel in it which counts for something <laughs> right right like i'll take one of glorfindel. there would be names among them that would be worth uh <laughs> right 
right. How many? How many mail clad knights? Yeah, quite a few. And if it's Glorfindel, even more. <laughs> but right. The point yeah. is, yes. The point is that Glorfindel can't pull Sauron out of bad dirt. Yeah. Himself, mm -hmm. like he individually cannot do that. So, what can you do? Like Elrond can say, yes, it would be great if we could fight Sauron, but with what army? Even if we mustered everybody, even if we had a really the last time you guys alliance, what size army are they putting together? And is it enough to lay siege to Mordor? Like Merkwood's not going to agree. The last time they tried that, they all died. Mm. Yeah, and Lothlorien remembers that one. Yeah, and Lothlorien. Okay, sure. Galadriel definitely has vigilant border guards is it enough to take on mordor mm -hmm. like probably not so okay you get rohan and gondor on board with your new plan and the you know whole five dunedain of the north will totally join you too mm. like yes. like how many people can you actually round up mm. so he, so what you could say and i think this is what sauron's Sar I keep doing this. Saruman's conclusion, what he thinks they should do, is fortify the north. If Sauron marches out of Mordor, that is our opportunity. Not trying to scale the right. the cliffs, not trying to to build a siege ramp up to to get over the Black Gate. You know, not trying to to take Barador right. one story at a time. We're already too weak to force our <clears throat> way into Mordor. Right, right. Whereas, if you know, if if it, as you say, he is bent on taking over Middle Earth without the Ring, then you know the best opportunities we have to do that are out here. So, you know, is defensively. Okay. That's that's at least a that's a plan instead of a non-plan. Right, and then is, he proceeds to fortify Isengard. to fortify his. Yeah, yeah, I'll lead the way on the fortification right. side. Good um, yeah. By the way, I was looking it up. It was two hundred years ago, almost exactly, that he took up residence in Isengard. Yeah. yeah. Could um, could Saruman also maybe add? Like embellish on his uh, deception about the ring, and maybe even add a little bit, add something about how the longer Sauron goes without having the ring, the weaker he'll get. So we don't need to go in and defeat him now. We just need to like we just have to hold him off. He um, can make up a bit of lo of ring lore that nobody else yeah. can fact check. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing is, though, we know that um, Sauron lost the ring when he fell right and it took a long time for him to rebuild after that but he did that so yeah, the idea he's actually that he's gaining in strength right, rather he than is him. slowly regrowing his strength they do have empirical evidence of that right That's true. so yeah, it's going to be enough. hard to convince anyone that he's gonna fade out now but right it's you like, could argue actually, little known fact it works like a sine wave people <laughs> yeah, it's, sorry. It's, yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah it's not it, it may it. look locally like it's a steady growth in power but trust me he's going to turn the corner any minute now yeah. and start declining oh, again sure. and it'd be a be a, 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 a new ice age for the for Sauron. <laughs> exactly yeah. well i mean obviously he was known for being a necromancer when he was in mirkwood so Saruman could imply that that's how he's been regaining his strength is yeah. using those powers. So he's relying on that instead of the ring this time around. Um, and it's all sleight he, of hand. Well, you could argue then that there'd be a limit to how yeah. much you can actually yeah, rebuild exactly. by siphoning off of dead spirits or whatever he's doing. So if there's a limit, then he wouldn't be able to regain full strength no matter how much necromancy mm. he does. You know, right. like Saruman can make that kind of argument of that Sauron's not going to come back like he was before, no matter what tricks he pulls. Once the ring's right. gone, he's he's got a capped limit. Okay. So you know, let's... Like um, no, kinda, let's be... you know, it, it, the problem no. remains, doesn't it, that like either he's, either he's 
getting stronger, in which case we really need to act now before he gets stronger. Or he's not getting stronger, and maybe he's weaker than he appears, in which case, like, hey, let's take him out. There doesn't seem to be a really, doesn't seem to be any sort of justification for doing nothing. For doing nothing. The, yeah. well, let's other just wait. Than, <laughs> let's just than, wait like, is a bad idea under every yeah. circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, I guess, here's my, here's my question. Like, um, ultimately, doing nothing is the right thing to do, right? Like, it sort of works out in the end. It's going to work out in the end. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right thing to do, but it's going to work out. Well, I guess the, 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 the question is, like, can they actually beat him if the ring still exists? What can they accomplish? What's, like, the best case scenario here? Hmm. All right, so if the ring w did wash down to the sea... So Sauron's never getting it back, but the ring's never getting destroyed either. Like, it's going to continue to exist, just not... Then they have to so, fight this fight over and over again for all time. This brings up a really interesting point. An interesting point of which I have recently become about 95% convinced. That nobody in the White Council knew that Sauron would be functionally destroyed and permanently weakened if the ring is destroyed. Mm. Through the entire mm. Lord of the Rings, no one even suggests that. That is, nobody suggests that destroying the ring is instantaneous victory over Sauron until mm. the Council of the Captains after the Battle of Pelennor Field. Gandalf says it then. Prior to that, in the entire Council of Elrond, all they ever say is, we have to keep Sauron from... It's keep away. We have to keep right. him from getting the ring. And destroying it is the only way to keep it away permanently. Right. right? That's otherwise permanent get it back away. somehow. Or yeah. else he'll get it back, right, right. sooner or later. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why mm -hmm. destroying it, or th throwing it in the sea and taking it to Valinor are, on the surface, legitimate alternatives. Because those two could theoretically be permanent keep away from Sauron, right? In either one of those, by either one of those methods, we would prevent him ever regaining it. And that's the crucial thing. He must not regain the ring. But it isn't until Gandalf returns from the dead and comes back and has that, and, and, and has okay. that council with them on Pelennor Field that he ever says, that anyone ever says, if we destroy the ring, we take out Sauron. Yeah. Um, and he will be reduced to practically nothing. Um, which, by the way, has really interesting implications. Like, for instance, um, Boromir trying to take the ring for himself is not a betrayal of Gondor in the way that it seems. Like, he yeah. didn't know. Like, he didn't know that by keeping the ring from going to Mordor, he's preventing his side from winning. He thinks yeah. he's making his side win. Like, it's a question mm -hmm. of what you do. Like, keep it away, yes, but what do you do in the, within the meanwhile, right? Isn't keeping it away and using it against him better than just keeping it away, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. It, it's not actually, in his mind, a betrayal. It's just a, a pivot, <laughs> right, right. Of, right, of tactics. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I think this is a thing we would need to decide. At, are they aware of that? How much do they mm. know? What is their right. source of information? They can't know much about the ring and how it relates well, to Sauron. Okay, so they don't know it's a Horcrux. Well, okay, the yes. elf. That's the, the thing elf, they don't know. Yes, the uh, the elf who knew the most about rings is Celebrimbor, who's you know not yes. available for comment at this council. Yes, um, the having become a flag. Yes, um, the people at the council who actually have rings of power on their hands at this council <laughs> are Gandalf, Galadriel, and Elrond. Kyrdin had a ring. Right. For yeah, a time. first hand experience, yeah. So he's also yeah. used one before. So that means you've got what four people who are familiar with rings from using them, not from making them. Mm, and then Saruman yes. of course has been digging into ring lore so presumably Sauron Saruman knows a good deal of what Saruman about as much as Celebrimbor can be did. known yeah right so like whatever Celebrimbor knew and wrote down and wrote down has probably been studied by Saruman yeah to the point that he's gonna call himself their <laughs> maker and start trying to make his that. own at some point yeah. so and they're holding this council in Eregion the ruins of Celebrimbor city so mm. like yeah. 
the the focus is on like this is what we know and this is where we are so it's not that they know nothing they mm. but they don't necessarily know the difference between what went into making the mm-hmm. elven rings versus what went into making the one ring because right. the elven right. rings were not horcruxes right, right. Yeah, and... there's no question that if you destroyed the Ring of Adamant, Galadriel's not going to drop dead. No, exactly, exactly. Nor and... would Celebrimbor. Nor would have Celebrimbor. Right. Exactly, right. exactly. But, they, but there's no part of them in those rings. Right, that's right. Whereas the One Ring contains... Yeah, Sauron put his own self in there in a way that Celebrimbor did not. Right. Yes. Now, but the other thing to keep in mind, I like the idea... I mean, I'm totally willing to grant... Um, at least a very large percentage of what Celebrimbor knew about the rings is now known by Saruman. But he's also not sharing information, right? right. So just because he knows doesn't mean it's in discussion at this council. Right. 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 No more than what he wants to say. And what he wants to say is not is not only going to not be everything he knows, it's not all going to be true, as we know full well. So, um... Oh, and... Uh, so it's... there can still be a very great deal of ignorance, which mm-hmm. Saruman either permits or encourages about the Rings of Power. So I am, um, I think that they, um, yeah, I think that, by the way, here's another question that I feel like I've never asked myself. Why did this get put on the agenda at this meeting? The Rings? Yeah. Why in 2953, for crying out loud, are they saying, hey, you know what? Let's talk about the Rings of Power. Like, what? why does that come up now? As opposed to before, they've had mm. lots of time to so, talk yeah. about these things. There's got, this... There has to be a question of if Sauron has arisen and re- reclaimed Mordor yeah. and Could he have himself, it? does he have it? Does he have it? Because yeah. that's why it's on yes. the agenda. That's yeah. got to be their question. Because that's got to be their question. So, yes, because we just took actually... him down, and he's already popping back up again. And that's got to be that's what prompts Saruman to tell his lie, yeah. right? Don't worry, the rings don't see. He doesn't have. And it. and that's got to be a relief if your if your thoughts are, did Sauron get it back, or is it rolled down to the sea? And it turns out neither of those is true. But Sauron getting it back would have been extremely bad news. So it's encouraging to hear what Saruman has to say, which is another reason why people would accept it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it is what they would like to hear, so that is yeah. another thing that makes it believable. Okay, okay. Um, so let's... Um, okay, I think I already said this, but I'll say it again. Let's be scientific here. First, who... We talked about this before, but let's make sure we're all on the same page. Who, who, who has a seat at the table at this meeting? When they're in closed session, do we, are we doing a big group or are we doing the small group? Is it just the... Okay, so for sure, Saruman, Gandalf, Galadriel, Elrond, Celeborn if he's there. Cirdan? Cirdan. Arwen and Glorfindel are part of um, Elrond's, Elrond's entourage. entourage. So yeah. they wouldn't necessarily be at every council meeting. Um, Radagast? He might yeah. not come. He might get an invitation he but not a, come. He, he could be seat. late. He has a seat yeah. at the table, I think. Yeah. I mean, I can't see uh, a reason to deny him a seat at no. the table. We know the first white council meeting was in Rivendell, and we know that Gandalf had pressing business away south for the third council meeting yes. um, which suggests that the, the third one may have been at Isengard suggest is not certainly stated right. uh, the direction he takes off from the eastern edge of Markwood where he parts from Bilbo and the dwarves yeah right so I mean he could have been headed there but also he mentions his cousin Radagast yeah. in that same context, context. so yeah. possibly Radagast right. Though, was at the last meeting references in the hobbit to what happens at the white council is I, not I, real useful. I, <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting that this is yeah. stated anywhere. Um yeah. yeah. Um so so yes, yeah, so yeah. Radagast would um have a seat but maybe not always use it. Right, the hey. blue wizards attend remotely. 
he's, he's they zoom in. I'm just, I'm just, anyway, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I just <laughs> found out that not only did the uh, members, not only did these people not know that destroying the ring will in fact destroy Sauron, but they, but Gandalf doesn't even think that Sauron, uh, has reason to think that Sauron himself does not think that because he says yeah. to Frodo and this is the dreadful chance Frodo he believed that the one had perished that the elves yes. had destroyed it as should have been done but he knows now that it has not perished that it has been found so he is seeking it seeking it why wasn't it destroyed cried Frodo so <laughs> good question Frodo <laughs> right. Right. Frodo um, asks the awkward question yes, yes. <laughs> um, so at, at the very so if if Gandalf is correct about what Sauron believes which he may not be right um, th there's no reason to assume that he is here um, but if Gandalf is correct then he, then he does not think that destroying it's possible that Tolkien himself didn't know that it would at this point I think that's he was almost certain actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the problem with ring lore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yes. yes, the idea is if Sauron could even have thought or mistaken that it was destroyed, then obviously he doesn't know what right. it'll actually feel like when it is destroyed. Yeah, yeah, like because presumably if <laughs> Sauron knew that destroying the ring would destroy him. He, in fact, knows that the ring itself is, in fact, not destroyed because right. he is, in fact, also not destroyed. Right. Yeah. So the nobody seems to have known that uh, applies to such characters as Gandalf <laughs> and Elrond, possibly Sauron, and definitely Tolkien. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> okay. At yeah. the time. <laughs> okay. At the time. Ms. Mrs. Monrique uh, makes yep. a very good point that the ring bearers know that Sauron is not wearing the ring that doesn't mean he doesn't have it right but he hasn't put it on because if right. they would had they would know they'd know but sauron certainly if he did have the ring he would not put it on until he was fully 100 percent ready to to go <coughs> to yes. go toe to toe so, with before so he's raised a know. single yeah. right before he's raised yeah. a single army or done anything like that he finds the ring he's not going to pop it on his finger and be like no. oh Oh, hi, Galadriel. I, I'm here. I'm, I'm over here. Right. I mean, right. could he dominate them? P possibly. He could. Right. Maybe he could make that work if he did have it all by himself. But he's cautious. Right. Um, but 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 it's it's still it, it is a good point. Somebody like Galadriel is not going to say. I feel confident that his declaration of himself in Mordor means he must have found the ring because she does have reason to believe maybe he hasn't or probably he hasn't I think that the fear just has to be like this has to be part of his plan and he's probably looking for it and he may find it yeah. okay a few a few questions one who has called this white council meeting because yeah. if it is, it makes okay. now yeah. that question makes a difference whether it's a ring bearer or a, a -ring -bearer. wannabe ring bearer because yeah. Saruman exactly. does not have that inside information to know yes and he knows he doesn't have it. And he knows who does have it. He's very annoyed right. by this. So exactly. the point is that that could be another motivation for having the council at this time would be to be like, yeah, let's just check in. And we're all real sure that Sauron doesn't have that ring. Like everyone right. knows he doesn't have the ring. Right. And we're all agreed on that. OK, good. <laughs> OK, so so let's let's go back to the cast. We've got so we're agreed on the, those are the people in the room. The big, mm -hmm. the biggest of the elves and the um, and the wizards, right? Yep. Just that. So, possibly empty seat for Radagast, Gandalf, Saruman, mm -hmm. Galadriel, um, Galadriel, Celeborn. I think I don't think they'd exclude Cel Celeborn. Mm -hmm. um, Elrond, Elrond, Círdan. Mm -hmm. Right. With so, room for like secondaries. Well, so those yeah. would be like in closed session. That's the main council. Yes. Right. Yes. Then there would be others who would come along, right? There would be others like who would be Arwen. present, like Arwen and Gorfindel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Aristor Haldir. and Galdor are probably there. What? Who? Ha Haldir. Haldir. Yeah, yeah, he's probably there. I mean, we don't have many other named characters, right? So yeah, we probably mean, have to bring him, wouldn't we? Yes. yes. Um, uh, 
Yes. Um, uh, do we involve Mirkwood? Did they get an invite? I think not. For one thing, there's no indication. Jewel is not among the wise. <laughs> well, I was about to say, there's no indication that they were part of the White Council. No. And Thrandall is going to be very anti having anything to do with attacking Mordor. So even if it was just that, well, you could be involved. Come join us. He'd be like, no, I'm good. So right. I don't I don't think Thrandall is at this meeting or so, any representatives of Thrandall. This suggests one major anti-parallel between the White Council meeting and our summit meeting in season seven, right? Mm -hmm. Season seven, the summit meeting is the, like the culmination, like when we're bringing everybody together in order to pitch the action to them, right? Yeah. This yep. is a preliminary discussion of the action prior to attempting to bring people together. And like, so we're not, we haven't even talked to Mirkwood yet, but if we decide that we're gonna, that it's a go on a, some kind of anti, you know, Sauron military plan, the next steps would be to approach Markwood and maybe approach Gondor and, and, and that kind of thing. But, but Not again, even that bothering puts with this... the dwarves. Yeah. Well, um, Erebor was just retaken within the last 10 years and yeah. um, it is rebuilding. So you could mention them, but they're not well, probably they had ready enough for... army to fight in the Battle of Five Armies. They could probably sure. still put something in the field, right? Right, right. So you've got the the Iron Hills dwarves and yeah. newly reformed Erebor. Yeah. So yeah, they could mention the dwarves, but would any of those people be willing to go march to Mordor now? Right. So again, basically thinking about our plot now, season seven plot. The White Council meeting is essentially the parallel, not to the summit, but to the Fingen Mithros meeting. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. What are we What are we going to do about this? Yeah. The what are we going to do meeting? Yeah. Now mm -hmm. again, even there, it's it's not the, obviously it's not exactly the same because Mithros has a plan, right? Um, you know, I mean, yes. I think he's started to like draw up his like flip charts right before he gets there, but um, mm -hmm. but still, still, I mean, it, it functional like as far as the steps in the planning process. It's that rather than we have a kind of a superficial parallel with the summit in some ways. Right. But um, but it isn't actually that. So, OK. Anyway, so that's one of the things I want to establish. I want to make sure we're understanding, like, what's happening here. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, so those are our main actors, the small group that's in the White Council itself. But there are other people whom folks would take seriously who would be coming there. We suggested there might be a Dunedain presence as well, potentially, or at least they could wander in. We had suggested that if you're going to have a meeting that you want to be a secret meeting in a ruinous city, you need security right. around the outside to like patrol the perimeter and make sure it stays a secret meeting. And we were suggesting that Dunedain would fulfill that role so that they're being rangers. Right. So we got Which some rangers in there. Yeah. They're there, but they're not part of they're, the right, meeting. They're not part of the council. Yeah. 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 Though, it seems a little odd, doesn't it? That Elrond has just, what, two years ago? A year, you know, in the last handful of years, told Aragorn his true name and lineage, and you're actually the chieftain of the Dunedain, but, but I'm not going to think to, like, involve you in any way in any discussions about the possibility of fulfilling the you know, doing another last alliance and stuff, which between, but that's probably not relevant to like, you know, the long lost heir of Gondor who's standing out there, you know, whom we could maybe so, come in and talk about this. A couple of things. Who knows that Aragorn's the long lost heir of Gondor? Um, Elrond. Elrond. But, yeah. and I'm, I'm not thinking he wouldn't trust the White Council people with that knowledge, but I'm not sure it's like, common knowledge that no it wouldn't be but again that. but he's there and he knows yeah <laughs> right? yeah yeah so, so you could yeah. um yeah and mm. i'm not saying i want aragorn involved i'm just right. trying to figure I out know, why it is, not and it's and it's i'm trying to think of the connections between this white council meeting that ultimately fails and the council of elrond which succeeds yes 
And one of the main differences is that people invited. Saruman is notably absent <laughs> from right. the right. latter meeting. Right. And so it's Gandalf and Elrond again. Same same guys. No, Galadriel's not there. Yeah. But you also have representatives from Gondor and from Mirkwood and from yeah. the dwarves of Erebor. Yeah. By the way, Phil Philip asked Hobbits, an excellent yeah. question. Have Aragorn and Gandalf met yet? No, they're like two years away from meeting, according to Appendix B. Yeah. yeah. The, it, in the sense that they've both been in Rivendell at the same time in our story, but um, we have not shown the meeting between them. And they, they yeah. would have, you know, crossed in, past each other. They don't know each other. They haven't had an event that brought them together yet. Right. What if, okay. uh, what if, what if Aragorn's declined? To be involved Ooh, in the council. If Elrond yeah. said, like, hey, I could bring you into this, and he yeah, was like, Yeah, you should come nah. to this meeting, and Aragorn's like, no, no, no. That's, you know, Let like, me introduce I, you. I, I want to be out like, in the, yeah. I want to be out in the field fighting orcs, and uh, I'll run the security. Yeah. That that actually would be kind of good, because no, we're agree. trying to show Aragorn finding his place right now, and yeah. jumping at a leadership-type role too soon when he barely knows the Dunedain. Like, what if he did go to the meeting and committed, like, yeah, we will totally help support you guys in this plan to fight Mordor. Are you just going to sign up your people for a giant fight against Sauron that they don't know about? Like, are you sure you can speak for them? <laughs> oh, come on, he can sell that. <laughs> but but no, I, but, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, so yeah. like, his, his reticence might actually work in this situation, not in maybe later situations, but in this yeah. particular situation, yeah. <laughs> reticence might be appropriate. Agreed, agreed. I, I like Philip, Philip was suggesting we could, we could do the meeting between Aragorn and Gandalf here. If we, it's not like we're going to do that on a separate thing. I think I mean, it's... we could, um, especially now that we're talking about splitting up episodes into different point of view characters. I think we were nervous to do it in a season if we had a different character who was neither of them being our central point of view character, because then what does the meaning even mean right. to a bigger story? But if we're telling a story with Gandalf and we're telling a story with Aragorn and we cross paths, right? They could it could happen here. Right. Okay. So let's go back to scientific again for a moment mm. let's think about each one of our big main characters because we don't have that many yep. of them right mm -hmm. um and this will this then relates to the who called the meeting question yes because i want to know first what each one of their angles are at this meeting before we figure out who's gonna who it makes sense to have initiated the meeting right um galadriel What's her, what's her issue? What's her take? What is she likely? What position is she likely to take in the "What do we do about Sauron?" question, which has to be the most burning question. Again, I refuse to believe that they called this as an academic symposia to discuss the Rings of Power. No, like the discussion of the Rings of Power has to be have come up in the context of addressing the question. Hey, so what? Sauron just declared himself a couple of years back. What are we going to do now? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Galadriel views herself as the enemy of Sauron. Yes. In a in a way, I mean, I know Gandalf does too, but yes, yes. Galadriel views herself as someone who can go toe to toe with him, sort of, or like, at least can ward him off. She's like the yes. million of the Third Age, right? Right, right, right. So she's seeing herself in that role. Yeah. So for her, they just fought to get him out of. Mirkwood, which, yay, that was right next door to her. She didn't like having him as a neighbor. He's gone now. Yes. Wonderful. Two minutes later, he's in Mordor. So that's annoying, but it is further away. And Lothlorien is safer than it was. So while this is bad news, it's not necessarily like the big, oh no, what do we do now? She's She had She's that moment. Panic. Right. Yeah. That was when they found out the necromancer was Sauron and it was her neighbor. That's when she's yes. like, oh, no, what do we do? Now it's more of a, well, let's rethink this. Because what we did before obviously didn't work. He just popped up again. Like, right. how do you get rid of this guy? Right. I don't know. So he's she, in Mordor now. Right. She would be a voice of sort of cautious skepticism even. Like, what can we do that, you know, 
just saying let's take action against Sauron. It's like, well, dude, we did that. Just we just did that, and it didn't work. It didn't take right. right? So right. let's not just hair off, build up an army, and go chasing him again for what? To like to right. like two more right. years later, you know, he, he pops up again. Right. So she would want to know that there's something different about the plan, and she yes. wants a different approach to how to deal with right. it. And right. meanwhile, Lothlorien is a nice, safe place that he can't get into, and she thinks she can protect keep it. Yeah, yes. she thinks I agree. that she's got Lothlorien. Of Safe. the, um, when the argument arises, and I, I like the idea of Saruman saying, let's fortify um, and protect our havens and stuff. Um, I, be- I can't believe that Elrond, we know that in, you know, 60 years, Elrond is going to be saying, I couldn't if Sauron when Sauron comes I will not be able to stand against him. Right? We know that he does not believe that Rivendell can resist Sauron. 60 right. years from now he is not going to believe that. So right. either we have to say that he does believe it and something changes his mind in the next 60 years or that he never did believe it. Right. But Galadriel mm. might believe it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That I can buy. That I can definitely buy. So okay, so so her position is she's concerned but she's not alarmed. And her biggest concern is we must find some way to deal with this problem permanently. We cannot just keep playing, you know, <clears throat> whack-a-mole with the necromancer, right? That right. hasn't worked. Um, okay, that I can buy. This, this is Galadriel's perspective. Um, Elrond, what's Elrond's <laughs> perspective? Elrond, I think, I think does not believe that fording up is going to be any good. Mm. I don't think he thinks he can take Sauron. Elrond. I mean, we know he doesn't think that in 60 years. I don't see something has mm-hmm. happened in the 60 years to change his mind. I think he uh, believes that now already. Elrond thinks that there is an as yet unrevealed component to this equation which will reveal itself, which must reveal itself in order for this particular piece of the <clears throat> part of the timeline to work out. Now, keep in mind, though, also, I mean, I, I agree with you. But I also want to keep in mind, Elrond is the Gilgalad disciple. Yes. Right? Yeah. He is like, if there is an heir to Gilgalad, it's Elrond. Right? Mm. Um, he was he was his captain in mm. the last alliance. Right? So if anyone mm. else is, if anyone is going to pick up the Gilgalad torch and lead the armies of the elves against Sauron, it's got to be Elrond. Right? I mean, if Galadriel's... he thinks that that's the move. So, I'm, I'm, it's hard well, because I agree with you, Nick. I think in the end, he's going to be basically taking the proto-Council of Elrond angle, right? Mm. Um, in the Council of Elrond, he's like, the moment has come. This when is this the component. Unexpect- this is the moment, yeah. right? Yeah. This is the moment. And so I like the idea of him being like... There may be a moment, but it is not this moment, <laughs> right? So like, I kind of like that. But at the same time, he like he does seem someone who is positioned. To, someone needs to advocate for military action. Like that's an obvious solution. Um, and and I see Galadriel resisting Gandalf. Yeah. Gandalf, Gandalf is going to advocate. Is, yeah, he's the one who's like, "Hey, let's act now. This is the time to do things." Right. Sauron's only going to get stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so that voice for military action will be from the one we guy who has no military, no power. land to defend. Yeah, no authority, right. N- yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. he can have the no idea. No soldiers whose lives he's going to be responsible for. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, <laughs> right. right? So, like, he can put that idea on the table, but unless anybody at the table <clears throat> takes it up, he's completely that's not... powerless to execute it without everyone's yes. agreement. Yeah. 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 Um, Whereas Elrond I... is less wholly. Powerless. powerless to do. I mean, that. he has yeah. he has a Glorfindel, but the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I would say that Glor that Elrond could probably field a couple of hundred of extremely powerful individuals, and that's probably it. Well, well, it's not anyway. nothing. Okay. It's not the the conversations that Elrond's been having with characters up to this point is, hey, Aragorn, you should probably do something with your life. <laughs> Because here's who you are, and time to know. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what he, 
the conversation yeah. last season was. No, I, I love that characterization of that conversation. Yeah, yeah. and and he could. Think Aragorn, it's time Ar- for you to start getting serious about making something of yourself. And he could think that Aragorn <laughs> is the component that he's yeah. waiting for. He's wrong. He's a piece right. of it, but he's right. not the piece. Yeah, he just doesn't um, know yet. But when he was talking with Arwen, and it's the piece he can see. I love that. Yeah. It's in yeah. My, he's not ready yet, but this is this is the sign. He's the sign. He's yeah. the Estel. Good. And he when, can't... Yeah, I mean, he named him Estel, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but the when Arwen showed up and said, "Hey, Dad, I've been in Lothlorien, but I'm getting nervous now because it seems like Sauron's back, and the elves should be doing something. And if no one's going to do anything, we should get out of Dodge like sooner rather than later. Like, why are right. we sticking around?" Mm. Elrond's message to her is not you're totally right, time to flee. It's no, there is hope here. There's stuff going on that you're not seeing. Right. And what he's saying is that men are gonna be the story, mm-hmm. not the mm-hmm. elves. So Elrond has enough wisdom to recognize that whatever the White Council decides to do about Sauron isn't what's gonna be done about Sauron. Right, right. Until they get men involved. So he could be the one advocating, hey, Aragorn, want to come sit on this council? Um, and it doesn't go anywhere. Well, so also, Aragorn's not ready. Well, and that's the I thing. I know that. Yes. Thinking of, but... thinking of Elrond and the positions that Elrond, the uh, moves that Elrond makes at the Council of Elrond, right? Mm-hmm. The fact that Aragorn is not ready would be a sign to Elrond. Like if Aragorn no, is not willing, really. yeah, mm-hmm. it, then obviously it's not time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the whole you need to go retake the throne mm-hmm. of Gondor. I mean, that's a fairly significant mm-hmm. thing to ask someone to do. It's a big and, which, is, which is why that it why it's so important that Aragorn is in fact fully ready to take the throne of Gondor when the Lord of the Rings opens and isn't thinking about oh but I, should I really be king and should I not really be king am I good enough to be king because we can do that now though v- right now he's young <laughs> enough to feel that way yes yes yeah. but yes not yes. later yes it's not later yeah no absolutely and so I like this creates then a possibility that at the beginning of the discussion essentially Gandalf is like we must act and Elrond could say you know what I think you might be right. Then Elrond talks to Aragorn and mm-hmm. is like, so, is it go time? What do you think? Should we have go time now, Aragorn? And Aragorn's mm-hmm. like, no, I'm not ready. This is not the time. I'm not ready. I can't do it. And then Elrond's like, oh, I guess. It's... So then he goes back in the council later. Because mm-hmm. remember, it's going to take place over more and, than one. And, it's not and one he session. withdraws his support yeah. from He's Gandalf's He's like, yeah, actually, on second thought, it's not go time after all. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's I, I I think it's not. And so, I mean, it's not like he just pulled the rug out from under Gandalf. He and Gandalf yeah, would have a Gandalf's private conversation like, about this. Yeah. Exactly right. But <laughs> but yeah. So to have him be initially like, okay, Gilgala did it. I'll do it too. Like, um, espe- again, Gilgalad and Elendil. That's what he's thinking about, right? Mm-hmm. I'll do Gilgalad if you do Elendil, right, Aragorn. Mm-hmm. We can do this. Let's do yeah. the mm-hmm. let's do the really last alliance. Let's right? get the band back together again. Let's get the band back together again, Aragorn. But this I, could be the thing. I think that I think it's it's important that when we're doing that scene, that discussion, it it should be something to like it should be as blatant as him saying, "Hey, <clears throat> Hey, uh, Aragorn. Uh, we would uh, we'd like you to, you know, take control of right. the you the throne of Gondor <laughs> and <laughs> you know raise the armies yes. of, of of men all over the continent. No, he wouldn't say. Hey, we'd like you to sit in on a council meeting. Mm. That, I mean, that's what you invite him to do. And Aragorn mm. turns that down. At which point, Elrond's like, "Okay, yeah, this guy's definitely not ready yeah. for what but, we need him to do." But it's a step along mm-hmm. Aragorn's road because if yeah. you remember back in season three he was this he was discluded exactly. from a very much smaller and much less important council about what to do with some wolves and, and he was mad about it right 
right but that's this the shows point personal is, growth exactly so his hesitance and reluctance <clears throat> now is appropriate to his mm -hmm. role with the people that he's supposed to be the leader of right and right. that's what we would be showing is we would be showing that he's just yes finding his and if somebody like eladon or elro here were on the spot to point out to remember that earlier moment yeah. from mm. season three and yeah, say remember the wolves Right. This is a way. Actually, can I just can, can I just point out the fact that that's significant personal growth on his part, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Should we uh, should we give him one of those um, one of those Aragorn moments of uh, foresight? Ooh, so like sort of as opposed I, to him that, being like, like oh, the hour has not yet know. come. Yeah. 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 Instead of him being like, oh, I don't know. I guess I don't think I'm really ready. But it could be more of a like, yeah. Nope. It's not my time. Not feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. That that could yeah. be good. Yeah, because that again makes it look like he's it's, really giving thought to things. You yeah. know what that reminds me of is uh, is what Jesus says to his the wedding at Cana. At the at Cana, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. my hour has not yet come. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, of course, in that case, he proceeds to do it anyway. But you know. right. Well, that's right. because his mother says, mm, "Right." Goes over and tells the servers, "Do whatever he tells you." <laughs> she kind of put him on the spot, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah. That that would be like like if if. We went ahead and uh, El, El Ron, had Elrond uh, say, "Okay, White Council, this here is Aragorn, who is the son of Arathorn, and he is in fact the rightful king of Gondor, and he is going to lay out his fantastic plan <laughs> <clears throat> for how we're going to defeat Mordor." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I I, I agree. Yeah. The um, yeah, the like. The hour has not yet come for him to have some kind of because remember this is also i mean not like next year but this is he's he's gonna go from here to his to like <coughs> his thorongil time right, right. um uh, not instant one, there's a four-year gap but still i mean it's 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 very soon after this that he begins mm -hmm. his journeys which are going to do lead to the yeah. thorongil thing um yes yeah. what one thing we could do is choose a character in the frame to tie to each character who's like a lead character in the main I was thinking of that before, yeah. So like the Hurin character in the frame is, the Mithros and or Fingen character in the frame is, and do those parallels. Mm, that might and be then I, I was tricky. thinking I, I was I when I was thinking of it before I started to kind of trying to map it. And the problem is that in the case of the near knight, everybody does in fact march off to war, right? Right. But whereas this this is a non-starter, this fails before it ever gets out of the gate. But what people want to do would be what you're mapping, because mm. it, at the end of the day, our frame is not actually about the White Council meetings, because who cares about the Rings of Power in the context of film film at this point? Like that's just <laughs> right. a background conversation people are having. The actual story has to be something different, mm. and. Arwen wanting them to do something about the threat, that's Hurin. So Arwen and Hurin is a good mm. parallel. Um, I'm not sure who Glorfindel would be, but, you know, possibly Fingen. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. my verse in this so, case is more Elrond. I want, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with making these parallels, but I would feel nervous about forcing them. Because yeah. the problem is, we know too much, like, our first goal has to be to have what the white council members say at the white council fit those characters in their positions. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so That's... let's finish mapping those out and then we can okay. think about parallels. Okay. So let's map them out first. Okay. Okay. So I think, I think we have, I, 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 I we like have Galadriel, Gandalf, we have Galadriel, Elrond and Gandalf. And Saruman. If Saruman's. Well, let's, okay. I want to do Saruman last. Okay. <laughs> so, Fair enough. That's fine. I um, thought we might be building up to that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's comp. I, I, he's, complicated because he's operating on two on like several different levels right yeah. um there has to be both what he is actually trying to do and what he is appears to be trying to do posturing exactly so um Kierden, let's stick with the simple ones for now Kierden. so i get i by the way i'm assuming that kelborn doesn't have a different stance from galadriel so um i <laughs> is it time for us all to leave is it time to leave Right, I mean, kierden has been building up to that his 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 entire life life on the shores of Middle Earth. You know, is this the time? 
Do you need me to construct the biggest flotilla? Shall we step of... up and manufacture? <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> right. basically, yeah. you need a fleet of ships that'll get right. you to Valinor. If that's what you need, let me know and put the order in. Yeah, um, put your orders in now. Put your... <laughs> Place your advanced orders with the ship right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, no, well, okay, I mean, yes. the ships don't the ships don't come back, right? Like he has to mm. build new ships for every journey to Valinor. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No. It is. Uh, it is an inefficient use of ships. I like, him, I like the idea of him getting a getting like the ledger out and putting it on the. Um... <laughs> right. All right. How, I took the liberty yeah. of drawing how up many order shall forms. I put this... Put you down for it. <laughs> Should I put you down for how many shifts? Yeah. No, I, I agree. Okay. So I think this is, I think this is, this is, no, this is great. Okay. So I think there's a legitimate argument to be made. And it's clear that Kyrdin is the best one to make it. I totally agree. Mm. Because you can say, all right, look, the elves who stayed after the War of Wrath, right, stayed because they thought we thought, right, that evil had ended in the world, right? Mm. Um, we've been leaving. We all know it is the time of departure, right? We all know that the elder days are yeah. passing and almost done. And, and for so, many of us, it's long past. It's long past, <laughs> right? Long past, right? Galadriel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not mentioning any names in particular. But, um, but yeah, so basically, I mean, because there is a logic that says it is not the job of the elves. This is not an elf problem. Before this is not this. what the elves are called to do. Mm. The mm. elves, the elves are, the elves are, we're, 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 we're diminishing Ooh. here, people. Right? Ooh. So either yeah. A, taking on Sauron is meant to be our last blaze of glory and we all die attempting to defeat Sauron. Yeah. As or, you do. As you do. Like, maybe... But the uh, the other alternative is we're supposed to leave. Like this is our sign that mm -hmm. our time is over, and we're so we can't we can't solve this problem. We can't take Sauron if we can't take Sauron out. Then what that means is it's time to go. Mm. That's yeah. the other choice, right? You know, it's, that's and, that's the choice that Arwen was wrestling with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That hits and Arwen the, right, right where she is. Right, and that's why the answer is. You're right. The elves aren't going to solve this problem, but mm. there are men. <laughs> right. You know, it's right. it's interesting, like because building off of what you just said there, it's almost like the job of the elves is kind of like to take care of the natural world, and they were willing to fight evil to do that. But that's not really their job. It's ours. Right. Right. You know, it's it's the job of the humans to actually fight evil. Um. You know, and yeah. in a perfect world where elves and and men continue to live in more or less some proximity, the humans are fighting the evil, right? Whereas where the elves are maintaining the forest, you know. Sorry, I, I was I was just smiling there because a thought crossed my mind, which is what if we have him, Kierden, say, "Look, people, the elder days are gone, the middle days are passing." The mm. new days have come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like so, Saruman. Saruman is alluding to that when he when he when he says that to Gandalf, right? In, yeah. In yeah. Isengard later on. I like that. Um, oh, I Anytime like that he... we can we can have a a White Council member up being now by what we've placed before it, alluding to stuff that we've had them say in the yeah. text of the Lord of the Rings. That's a <laughs> That's a huge win. Right. So that we, we retro, we, we retcon the idea that Saruman is quoting Kierden when he says that mm -hmm. to Gandalf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, as Gand like a safe Gandalf's, and comfortable beginning. Gandalf seems annoyed by that beginning to the speech <laughs> yes. when he's re relaying it. And it, if he'd heard it before, that would explain his impatience yeah. with Saruman. Yeah. I love it. And Saruman, Saruman is, is twisting it in the way yeah, that like, he is. Right? That's not what Kierden meant. That's right. That's, that's, you are so <laughs> misquoting Kierden right now. That's not what he meant at all. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, that would be really annoying. And therefore fun. So yeah. anyway, I, yeah. I, I think that I, anyway, but, but, but basically that's the idea, right? So, yeah. yeah. So Kierden advocates to say, I think we need to confront the reality that we can't solve the problems of Middle-earth. And maybe yeah. what we're being told is that 
it's it's our time to go. Like we're yeah. we're we you know we need to we need to check out not to run away you know not out of cowardice not like you know peace out people deal with your problems we're gonna, but just to say like we were supposed to go a long time ago yeah um yeah. you Which, know we've 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 we have overstayed um there's something about this that has always kind of bothered me though because the like the the wood elves there doesn't seem to be any pressure for them to leave and is it just that just as they were not called to leave originally, right? That they are, they are still part of this world in a way that <clears throat> the Nold, the 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 Kalaquendi and the Sindar are not. No, just that they're in den- So, I'm gonna put on not only my Kierden hat. I'm gonna okay. put on my filter-free. Kierden hat. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Kierden with no filter might say to that, they missed the boat the first time. They're going to yeah. keep missing the boat. Right? right? They're diminishing too. They just don't care. They would or rather stay and diminish yeah, than but, go into the West. But maybe and, that's the way that's supposed to be, though. In which case, they're going to dwindle and they're going to become, you know, diminutive Pixies. fairies or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be. They're going to be you know, the voices that Tolkien is going to hear, you know, when he's writing uh, the um, uh, the the uh, the Cartierian Among the Trees poem. Right. You know, yeah. like that the, the, there's it will be so. Yeah, that's what they're going to be. In, in a um, sense, though, we kind of need them too, though, you know, like maybe that's yes, a good I, and right thing that for the for it to it happen. It could be. I would not predict that Kierden would think that way, however. Oh, no, of course not. Yeah. That's that's antithetical to his whole existence. Yeah. yeah. Right. So no, no I but think this the, is just this is just something that has bothered me. No, so I think the, I think that he for, would say forever. like they no, they, they don't feel any urgency. They should, but they don't. Mm. They're gonna stay, they're gonna diminish. They, yeah. and that's that's their choice, mm-hmm. but it's not it's not a it's not a good choice. It's not the mm. right choice. I mean, I think Kierden mm-hmm. would say it's not the right thing. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, dedicated yeah, sure. his whole career to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, in the sense of, because it's, it, it, for years it's bothered me that, yeah. like, it, but but not all, like, everybody keeps saying all the elves are leaving, but not all the elves are leaving. Actually, yeah, there are a bunch of them. Don't worry, Sam. <laughs> There's some that don't seem to be going anywhere. I mean, that's yeah. the whole sea longing thing of yeah. they, the reason they haven't, noticed that they need to get out of here is they've never seen they the haven't sea. seen the sea yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i mean that the, the question the is, is it contagious just... is legolas gonna spread it when he gets home right like yes is he's gonna start bringing people out for beach trips <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> and there's like this religious cult that emerges <laughs> In Mirkwood. <laughs> Beach elves. So anyway, oh, that, yeah. is the, okay. Who? So we got Kierden. Is there anybody we else? Viewpoint that I we care about on the White Council at this point because Radagast's not showing up. So, no. does yeah. Caliborn okay. have a distinct viewpoint? I like Mrs. Aside from... suggestion that his contribution is whatever we do, let's just not cooperate with the dwarves. <laughs> right. I was about to say, if he has any difference from Galadriel, it would be on dwarf-related matters. Right. Right. If that if if, if that comes up, he could be a voice against it. Uh, okay, but dwarf. let's let's say that it doesn't come up, that the, he, he has no distinct point of view from can Galadriel in that case. So, I'm not saying that I can. I'm just saying, <clears throat> like, would we want how, to think of one? <laughs> how would it? Um, well, let's think. Um, if Galadriel's view is that Lothlorien can be strengthened. She can personally hold off Sauron. At least he's further away now in Mordor than he was in Mirkwood. Okay. Is that is that anything Celeborn would disagree I with? I don't think that Celeborn is as confident in that. I was going to say the same but thing. But he might think that's still the best. Like, what else are we going to do? Because mm. remember, he's the one who leads the armies. Yeah. Right. In the field. <laughs> Yeah. So he could be yeah. like, well, okay, honey, but you know, I got to tell you, I wouldn't look forward to that, you know, an invasion mm-hmm. from Mordor, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um and it's not like he lacks confidence in her, but he does yeah. not have the first person like Galadriel feels strong enough in herself 
to warp yes. zone. Yeah, I mean, Galadriel plus ring against Sauron without the ring, like that's. Yeah, you know. and Celeborn could be very confident in her. I mean, he could be mm. like, well, you know, like, honey, if you say you can hold him off, okay, I believe you that you can hold him off. Um, mm. But I would, I would absolutely see him being less. He, it's he's not speaking. You could from, hold him off while the entire forest of Lothlorien is burning around burned you. <laughs> yes yeah yes. <laughs> like that um, that's also a possibility he could have some uncertainties about the military prospects mm. right well, and, okay and she could also she could say well well honey if you'd prefer you can march the armies over to mordor right well no, see, never mind <laughs> forget i said I could anything see i could see Celeborn being a voice against the militarization plan right right to, who'd say, look, okay, I know our armies. I know the Goathrim. And what's more, I think I know Thranduil's armies better than y'all do. Okay? Because mm -hmm. they're neighbors. And look, let's not kid ourselves. As Nick said, the High Elves can bring some heavy hitters. But if you're talking about fielding an army of Elves, it's going to be largely composed of Goathrim and... and yeah you know, Thranduil's people, right? Yes. Yeah. Wood Elves and Goathrim. I know they those just, two armies. And they just fought Sauron and Mirkwood. They, like, yeah. They, they know what this looks like when he only had Dol Guldar. Exactly. So now it's that like, he's in Mordor, like, it's a little different. Right. So he would, I, I mean, I could easily see him saying something like, look, let's not, let's not fool ourselves, people. Mm -hmm. Right? Unless there is some kind of massive unification and mobilization of, of the human, the human yeah. forces. Yeah. And I have no idea how that could come about. Um, any then, ideas, Elrond? <laughs> right, does anybody have any suggestions? <laughs> anyway, like, so unless in the, in, uh, uh, except mm -hmm. for the highly unlikely event of, of that happening, there, look, we can talk, we can say it, but it's not, that's not going to happen. That's not a real thing. Yeah. That's not a real thing. Yeah. He yeah. would be the one who would be most in touch with the military strength of the elves, and, broadly and he, speaking. He seems to me to be the perfect person to answer Gandalf mm -hmm. when that's Gandalf's recommendation. Because he can say that with, like he has no he has no agenda in saying that. Mm -hmm. Like it's not yeah. about protect like there's no protectionism no. going on. <clears throat> no. You know. Uh, unless, it, would, it, it would simply it, be his assessment of their military strength. Right. Uh, unless you, Gandalf, can deliver, you know, Gondor. The humans. And don't, Rohan, even, don't even talk to me about the dwarves. Right? Dale. Because, like, don't even talk to me about, yeah. about, a, about a Regian. You, you know, Thranduil had plenty to say about that. <laughs> yes. Thanks so much. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, like the whole, you know, the whole. Um... You almost started a, a war between <clears throat> between the dwarves, and and actually, from Kelborn's perspective, that could seem pretty true that Gandalf almost instigated a, a war between Thranduil and his neighbors. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yes, your own military <laughs> campaigns, Gandalf, are not. Um... <laughs> It's a pretty checkered That's true. I, I, I guess they could they could be pointing to to a track record here. Exactly. Like, you yeah. know what, Gandalf, your 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 so far your schemes and plans. Um, uh, and we... that is Gandalf's military record. <laughs> now, is, like, is the Battle of the Five, it Ar Battle out. Of Five Armies? <laughs> like yeah, sure. <laughs> he got it, results at the end of the day, but it almost <laughs> didn't. Like, it, like yeah. very nearly. It, it was dodgy. It, it helped that they were able to unite against a common enemy who showed mm -hmm. up later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that yes. really improved the mm -hmm. situation exactly. drastically. Exactly. Um, but yeah, okay, all right. So now I can see that from Caliborn. So this this isn't like it's not. We don't have to like differentiate him from the sense of like him taking a different stand from Galadriel, but his his emphasis. Yeah. Would be he's different. just more vocal and, on that. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Monrick just mentioned Kelleborn having PTSD, which if he was at all involved in even the effects of the Near Knife, 
which he's is not the story gonna... we're telling. No, no, but I mean, mm. even if even if he's not he personally there, I mean, he could be. I mean, if we have Mablung and Bella going, this no. Mablung. <clears throat> right. That's not a. That's not a big True. ask. Sure, he could be there. Um, and if Gal okay, let me put it this way: if Galadriel is riding in a chariot with boars, and Caliborn doesn't even show up, that's a bad look for Caliborn. That's true. I'm going okay. to tell you. He's got to be with Galadriel, doesn't he? Well, the he whole point happen. of their story was that she would go get the Easterlings right, and he would go get Doriath. So, <clears throat> yeah. They could but, meet on the field, though all the fo all the the armies of 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 Morgoth lay between them. Anyway, mm. never mind. Um, they could. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's okay. Sorry. Man. Oh, Sorry. she almost kills Aldor, and he stops her, and then Maglor kills him. Like Marie would much <laughs> prefer. No, no, no. That's not how I want that to go. That's fine. That's fine. We're not talking about season seven. Okay. <laughs> so, so Saruman, Saruman. Mm -hmm. Saruman agreed to the attack on Dol Guldur because he felt that Sauron was getting warm in yeah. his search for the ring, or at least he was yes. afraid of that. Right, he was very and alarmed. So he, wanted, he wanted to inhibit that as much mm -hmm. as possible. He doesn't want Sauron to get the ring because he wants to get it himself. So, um, And also because if Sauron got it, it would be... Yeah, obviously. Yeah, that's obviously Super bad. bad. Yeah, but he, the fact that he doesn't tell everybody that this is his reason shows that he yes. also has he definitely his wanted up. it. Yeah, goals. Mm -hmm. So his um, plan is in fact to bide his time until he can find the ring, and then he doesn't have to worry about Sauron. Sauron. Anymore. Yes, the the action. So with Sar with Saruman, and frankly with Saruman alone, we have a an attested action that he took at this council, right? We don't know what anybody else did or said at this council exactly, but we know what he, uh, one thing that he did and said, and that is that he took it upon himself. And as we have already discussed, I think took a radical step and a major risk. Like he, he, he pushed all of his chips to the center of the table mm. um, in the act of convincing everybody in the room. Yeah. That the ring was unfindable and not and didn't need to be looked for, and that Sauron was definitely not going to get it. Um, but definitely, like, so everyone can stop thinking about the one ring because it's a total non issue, was the result that he wanted from that. But he mm -hmm. took, which means by definition, he would never have raised this question. He's mm -hmm. trying to put the question to bed, that's his whole purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Is to say, everyone can stop thinking about the one ring now, it's off the table. Mm. So again, obviously, he's not the one who puts it on the table, the, the, the question. Um, so what what is so stalling? All he has to do Nick, is engineer all he has to do is engineer for somebody else. Like he maybe calls this meeting because he wants that question answered for himself. Nah. No. See, I I think he's he's being obstructive. He doesn't okay. have a plan. He's just being obstructed. This is what, I think Saruman cannot call this meeting. I can okay. see no angle for Saruman in calling this meeting. Okay. Especially, so like, he's not going to call, like, let's all get together and talk so that I can convince or us to do nothing is a weird thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to do nothing, that purpose could be much better served by not calling everybody together, mm. right. <laughs> right? So, So yeah, so that would leave Gandalf who wanted to be like, so time for military action again. Just like I said last time, we should all get together and fight Sauron and Merkwood, and he ignored me for 90 years. Which can lead Goadriel to say, but let's talk about what happened when we did yeah. that last time. Yeah. Speaking of your military action, Gandalf. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so Gandalf would be a good candidate to call the meeting. Elrond's a possibility as well. Yes. But um, if he's not convinced that now is the time, I don't see him calling the meeting. Well, I don't know. I kind of like... I, okay, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of picking up on the Saruman is really irritated at Galadriel thing that we got from Saruman in The Lord of the Rings, right? About how mm. she always schemed for Gandalf's part and stuff. Yes, right? yes, yes. And obviously that's an old issue of her, you know, nominating Gandalf for head of the council originally, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if we kind of echo that in the fact that... So if, what if... Gandalf comes to Galadriel with his concerns, right? His, like, we need to act now. 
let's let's mm-hmm. let, let's get things in motion. And Galadriel's like, okay, and she calls the meeting. She calls the meeting and then is like, I have called this meeting and I would like to hand the floor over to Gandalf. And that would be like the double annoyance from Saruman. He can't not have the meeting because she's called it and they're like, okay, right. we're fine. And, and you know, Gandalf seconds it, right? But um, so he has to have the meeting and he's annoyed by that already. And then she puts Gandalf in the spotlight and he, and it, this is like the old wound right <coughs> and now he's like oh sure once again right um you know her trying to make gandalf the center of this party right as if i'm not even here right, <coughs> right. so so that's what i was thinking those dynamics could play mm. with um uh okay uh with it. but i mean it's it but i will admit her calling the meeting is a little bit weird if she's going to, in the end, advocate for not doing anything. But I guess all in order to call the meeting, all she has to be convinced of is that they should have the conversation, I suppose. Mm. Right. But We should talk about what just happened. There is enough concern that we should, uh, like, get... So, yeah, our uh, the enemy to whom, like, we have sworn enmity and, like, the whole reason why I'm here in Middle-earth and stuff has, like, openly declared himself again. Kind of seems like maybe we should talk about that. Does it hmm. seem like a thing we should talk about? Um, yes. Or it could be Gandalf. This could be, like again, Gandalf... I'm thinking of Saruman's comments about him putting his nose in every business, whether it belongs to him or not. Um, and we know he was the impetus behind the second White Council meeting. Yes. Because he was the one who like, hey, guys, news, necromancer, actually Sauron. Right. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I feel like him being like, hey, guys, news, let's do a thing. And they're like, yeah, 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 would fit for what the White Council mm. dynamic seems to be. <laughs> right. But again, it would. Um, uh... But I know pulling Gladriel in would help with that understanding the Sarm and Gladriel tension, because it's hard to right. get to that in many yes. ways. But if she just supported, like he said, like the whole reason they're having the meeting is because Gandalf said he wanted to have a meeting and she agreed. Yes, we should have right. a meeting. Right. Mm. So it's once again, the Gandalf Galadriel block working against Saruman, right. Mm-hmm. Or being an obstacle that Saruman has to try to overcome. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, sure. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. No, no. Um, so uh, it seems to me that as, as we're growing this, that our primary POV is actually going to be Elrond. Now we can still switch off like what what we discussed, but I think that the unifying storyline has Elrond at the center of it, mm-hmm. right? Um, so having Gandalf and possibly Galadriel alongside him calling the meeting, Gandalf initially convinces him at least that at least that <clears throat> now because, might be the time. Right, I agree with you because the shift from Amdir to Estelle is all Elrond. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. And he's going to be the one we'll want to follow. He's going to have all the interesting conversations. Right. Yes. Now, now that doesn't mean to... that we can't follow other people yeah. in the course of the, the season uh, because we really only need a couple of conversations right. with Elrond to to make that story happen. Mm-hmm. But, but you're the, right; he's sort of the nexus. But the people Aragorn, we're following, with, yeah. yeah, the people we're following are in his orbit. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, exactly. Because we could have conversations between Elrond and Glorfindel, Elrond and Arwen, Elrond and Aragorn, Elrond and Galadriel, Elrond and Gandalf. Like mm. those all seem like perfectly natural pairings to happen within the course yeah. of this council. Whereas it would be slightly more difficult to be like okay so why is galadriel gonna talk to glorfindel and like why right. like where's this right. happen? yeah and so. like a yeah exactly he with least awkwardness and most facility elrond is the one who can be the interlocutor for all the people we want to have talking in the yeah. in the whole scene and if yeah. frame. and if we're able to get access to some telepathic conversations that Elrond is having I feel like like we're going to be able to op- like peel him open 
in ways like he will be able to be extraordinarily frank mm -hmm. in ways that we haven't really been able to utilize him prior to this. Yes. Because in the past, <clears throat> whenever he's had a conversation with somebody, there's always been an agenda mm -hmm. behind the conversation itself. Like nobody's ever, I think this maybe one time in season one where somebody convinced Elrond to change his mind about something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I love this. Okay. It's getting late. So here's what, here's, here's the last thing we'll do. Um, I will, I will leave to you guys to sort out the intricacies. Cause it'd be pretty intricate of passing the point of view from one episode to another and stuff. Maybe we can come up with a list of four Marie, as you were suggesting, but I'm looking at the outline here. And thinking of the three acts of our season, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the very least, we should um, we should figure right our three acts into the shape of the frame. Right. Yes. So if Act One of the sh of the season um, ends with the meeting of Fingon and Mithros. Right. Yes. So it's it's all the setup and deciding what's going to happen. So I we can parallel that with like day one of the discussions or whatever, like the initial discussions in which the question is asked, what do we do now? Right. And the initial proposal of Gandalf to say we should we should act. Right. Um, oh, wait, shoot. Hang on. There's one thing we didn't come up with yet, which is super important. Who's the one who says, can we talk about the rings of power? Like. We should have a rings of power conversation, right? Who who says that? Who brings that up? Is that Gandalf? Is that Galadriel? No, it's not, it's not Saruman. We I know. feel like it's not a ring bearer. So maybe Kierden. Maybe Kierden? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because he and has insider information on the rings of power, but he doesn't have one. But not current, so, current status so updates. Yeah. He doesn't have the... So does Sauron have a ring on his finger right now? Anyone in this room know if Sauron's got a ring on his finger? I mean, I wouldn't know, but <laughs> not that I would know. But yeah, and, yeah. and obviously, but I knew when it happened the first time. Well, and, no, he didn't. Right. Gil Gallant had it. But I know that you should know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole yes. like, I know we can't talk about it, and we can't say who would know. But does anyone here know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you know, actually, come to think of it. This is kind of it. So, look, that Elrond and Galadriel have a ring of power, worst kept secret in Middle Earth, right? I mean, like, <laughs> come on now. Um, but Saruman Kier doesn't know that Gandalf has one. Which Saruman means. Does. No, Saruman knows. Saruman knows that Gandalf has it? Yeah, he's mad about it. He knows that Cirdan gave uh, Gandalf the ring I've and not him. It. Like, Saruman feels slighted. That Gandalf has it. Every, okay, the entire White Council knows who has the three Elven rings. It's not a secret. So I think we can talk about it openly. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Anyway, so I love it. Kierden, yes. Kierden would be a good person to bring this up. And it would be it would be a it would be a, a logical follow-up question. Like, okay, so Sauron so, so he's the one who asks, um, when we talk about what to do now, can we talk about what now is? Like, yeah, is this has Sauron revealed himself because he's found the ring? Asking for a friend, right? And then they can yeah, talk yeah. about it and say, well, "No, I don't think so." And then, yeah. if but he then has, some... it's time. There's no question. It is now too, time to leave. <laughs> right, exactly. right. Cause, right. Yeah, Kieran would bring it up for that reason of like, wait, like I came to this meeting to find out. Is it way later than we thought it was in the right. time? Should we be leaving? Exactly. Time? Do we need we to be working at... overtime on right. the boats right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> right. Do How I... many boats do you all need? Is what... Do I, and, do and I need to send out the there... press gangs to get to, right. to, to step up production? Yeah. And maybe we get to, to... Maybe the only answer we have access to is we get to Valinor and we're safe. And while we're there, we'll be like, hey, um, so Valar... Um, you could help the men that are left over there. Um, yeah, just getting saying. kind of rough down there. Yeah, exactly. Actually, he can really <clears throat> suggest that. Anyway, okay, all right. So, so he brings it up, and it comes up that way. And this is then, and then somebody Gandalf even maybe says, "Okay, 
we, we don't know that he has the ring, in which case, shouldn't our highest priority be trying to find the ring so that we make sure that Sauron doesn't get it? If he doesn't have it now, right? Mm -hmm. If he does get it, that's end game, right? <clears throat> so like total game over if he gets the ring. So so that what we should totally do is exert all of our efforts to mm. finding the ring, at which point Saruman is like, Tell you what. So no. So Saruman so no. made sure, but Saruman made sure to let somebody else say that. He, he mention that's yep. the last that thing this, he wants. Right. Yep. Yeah. He he waited for somebody else to mention. Well, we we know that he doesn't have it on at the very least because he he liked to get yep. that question answered at the yep. very least. Good. Yep. Yeah. He does want. He, he would be interested in that. So it's it's that would be the suggestion that would push Saruman to the desperation tactic, mm -hmm. right? I have got to take control of this yeah. and whatever we do, I have to prevent the whole white council from looking. For I got to get up my bud nipper. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. This has got to be completely nipped. So let's, so then he says his thing at which <clears throat> point then Gandalf can, can shift and say, right. well then great military action, never going to get better than the present. Right? right. If he's not got the ring and he's not going to get the ring then we just then then the only thing left for us to figure mm -hmm. is how we can defeat him right. so we don't need to personally go beat him we we don't have to personally take the field in order to beat him up because he doesn't right. have the ring or or maybe they do anyway but um but in any case yeah. there's hope the, right? again there's the, hope the there's argument hope here if he doesn't have the ring Right. The waiting for him to come out from Mordor yeah. and attack him sounds a little bit like the near nice plans of so Morgoth's forces take the field. And then we and then attack we him from troops. both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So yes. That, well, this is a much long longer game version. It, of that, it is. For sure. It is. But yeah, yeah. but the same idea of wait until he comes out and then smash him. Yeah. Okay. So so quick question then. This rings of power discussion. Is this this is an act one discussion, right? So the, what is the problem? Oh, hey, how about the rings of power? Nah, rolled down the river to the sea. Then what? That's act one, basically, roughly. I'm not like necessarily hard lines, but because then act two, right? The parallel in the season to act two mm -hmm. um, is from, we're doing like diplomacy and establishing relationships at the beginning, all the way right. down to the plague striking and... You know, getting somewhere in there is the so that hey, seems Aragorn the when it comes to on the council. Yes. The, so that's the a stat. Well, I think that's got to wait until near the end of the season, honestly. Yep. Um, but th <clears throat> the middle chunk of the season is kind of where we're going to. Everybody is going to lay out their positions. Yep. In detail. Yep. <clears throat> It's going to be so, clear what the playing field looks like. This is that where we sense. get Galadriel raising the whack-a-mole objection, where we get mm -hmm. Celeborn raising the dubious military strength uh, observation, mm -hmm. where we get Kierden advocating for the ships, guys. ship building. Ships. Right? How many ships <laughs> do I put you down for? Right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Um, it's like he's selling Girl Scout cookies or something. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, I happen to bring along order forms. Um, and uh <laughs> okay the white council meeting does seem the place for that <laughs> it is it is um okay so um yes all of that stuff happened and and this is where elrond could do his initial like i am the heir of gilgalad thing yes right he yep. should feel like he's compelled to do something yes. for sure yeah clearly clearly <clears throat> And um, okay, so that's so, so those are the that's the part of it that happens. And by the way, this doesn't have to be all in one session. I think yeah. we could, or do we want to wait until Act Three to have the conversations with others to bring in conversations with Gore Findel and Arwen and Aragorn, all of them? Well, it do we have like one long council meeting over Act One and Two, and then have a break in which we have these other discussions, and then come back for a culminating? decision to not do anything at the end of I Act 3. I don't think we want the council meeting to be that static. I feel like it's a lot more come and go. Mm -hmm. So I think we will have multiple actual meetings happening yeah. over the course of the first two acts. Um, 
but mostly those core members. So bringing in the <coughs> other characters towards the end could be interesting. Yeah. yeah. I would say do that toward the latter half of the second act because act three should be crunch time. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. he should have, because um, Elrond's interlocutor for why he's changed his mind is yes. Arwen. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, and he, sh to, for him to like put too fine a point on it might be wrong, but for him to kind of say, you know, Now's essentially, not the time. <laughs> essentially reassert what he was telling her last season. Like, like there are things in motion that will get us there, but we're that, not there yet. That, <clears throat> right. And, and if those are, are not going to do it, you know, Celeborn's not wrong. Like they, all these people, mm -hmm. they're not wrong in saying that we're not going to be able to take this on. So if it's going to happen, if it's if it's Iluvatar's will that it's going to happen, it's going to happen because of something else that isn't hasn't been made obvious yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, essentially, um, either that or. You know, this is the part of the story where we're all gonna, where we're all gonna die. You know, this could be the near north part of the story. We don't know. Um, and I think it, he might explicitly tie it back to the ruin of Valerian. Can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. uh, this might not be a good suggestion, but it's a suggestion <laughs> anyway. One other conversation. The only conversation. Elrond could be there, but where Elrond <laughs> isn't necessarily like the central connecting mm -hmm. point is we probably should have a Gandalf Saruman scene. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. And wouldn't it be fun to do a, the Gandalf Saruman conversation in the Oldor makes his move mm -hmm. episode? <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. A little foreshadowy, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. In, in the Sauron meets with Aldor. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, if we, nice. I know we wanted to do something with telepathy in this. Mm -hmm. If the whole point is to have a conversation where a character is in the room, but they're not part of the conversation. Yes. Elrond can totally be sitting there while Gandalf and yes. Saruman are having a side conversation. I think there should be a ton of that. Yeah, but I, I mean, the particular, how do we, if we want Elrond and for everything else, Mm. This particular one, he's right there, but they're he's not right talking there. to him. They're just mm. back and forth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Anyway, so the one thing to. I'm going to say this cautiously instead of incautiously, as is my want. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to guard very carefully against a very easy to get into problem which is giving Gandalf a reason to suspect Saruman right. too early. Yeah, and the thing precisely. I will cautiously say is that this is a contingency which it seems to me that Tolkien guarded against imperfectly. Mm. This is my pet peeve about that unfinished tale scene with the smoke rings. I have a really hard time reconciling the Gandalf of that scene with the Gandalf of many, many years later, who is still apparently trusting Saruman implicitly. Well, we could fix that here. We're having a conversation where Saruman is imminently reasonable. And... Wins Gandalf over completely. <clears throat> yeah. And, like, it should be such that even, like, anybody who hasn't read the books... Right, right. Shouldn't shouldn't even really suspect anything from just from the conversation. Now, if we right. contextualize it along with a with a, a betrayal that's happening, that might kind of give it away. But I mean, it's not like it's a big secret. No, no, yeah. That's been but amply I, I, spoiled, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that was the challenge that Peter Jackson had to go back and show yes. a White Council meeting in the Hobbit films yes. where everybody knows where this is going mm -hmm. because and it doesn't already... help that he cast Dracula's as I was, and, and, and Christopher <laughs> Lee was Saruman. So, you know, he was still Christopher Lee in that scene. So, right. Yes. 
um, maybe <coughs> easier to see that this guy is not really in agreement with the council mm. on certain levels. But uh, but I think that of all the things that happened in the Hobbit, I think that that was actually really well done. I was going to say Saruman did seem eminently reasonable. You yeah, know. like if if they pulled it off after already showing us Saruman's betrayal and death scene and casting yeah. Christopher Lee, like I think it's doable here. Um, yeah. We just have to be. Like you said, it's, it's, it's just something that we have to be very on guard. It's, it's and it's, it's, not it's just really saying, tender. "Oh, wait, let's use the smoke ring scene because it's a white council scene. Let's just throw it in there." Like, yeah, we should definitely think through implications. Because yes. um, I I think the smoke rings idea is fun, but it happens way too early to work. Like, yeah, just yeah. Unless, of course. We could also just hint at it and and leave it out. I mean, like, yeah, Saruman well, can whole, be. He when, when, off blowing smoke rings, and then he grasps at the smoke rings, and they all vanish. Mm. And it's like grasping for rings and the death of Saruman. <laughs> like it, it's foretelling a lot. Yes, yeah, but the, I think that if if Gandalf can be angry with Saruman. For Saruman's resistance to his idea, and yeah. Saruman right. is absolutely going to be annoyed with Gandalf, right? Right. Mm -hmm. From the and start. I think, and <coughs> if in the penultimate episode or the the anti penultimate episode, whichever one it is, if Saruman and Gandalf have a have a conversation where they kind of make up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Where Saruman says, "Look, I know what you're trying to do, and and you know it would it would seem wisdom, but for the warning in my heart, right. um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you're not wrong that you know that Saruman is that Sauron is dangerous, right? <clears throat> um, but also, you and what army? Like your you, idea? You know, what would yeah. you What would you have us do? You, like you mm -hmm. know as well as I do that it's not there, um, and that's why the entire council decided against what you wanted to do. Yes, you know, um, to, yeah. to have that kind of happen, I think would go a long way to ameliorate the mm -hmm. the issue. And from and Saruman's perspective, and, and just thinking only of Saruman's <clears throat> perspective, he's already won. He's achieved his end. Yes, yes. So any kind of bridge building or like he's beaten Gandalf and he's achieved his end. And so right. now he can afford to be gracious to try to keep Gandalf in line. Right. Yep. He needs he, he needs is a strong word. He would like to maintain Gandalf a tool of uh, of his because it, it, um, if he proceeds to now keep watch on Gandalf's every move, well, that gives him this whole flow of information and if Gandalf sees him as an enemy that's going to be a lot harder to do it's going to be a lot easier to spy on Gandalf if Gandalf uh, <clears throat> is friendly towards him yes yes yeah yes absolutely um the one thing that's going to be hard of course is that we there's no available interlocutor with whom Saruman can speak in order for us to reveal what he's actually thinking and planning I don't but think we, we need don't, to. We don't need to because No, we don't need to. Because everybody knows not... the end. The... Or and even if they don't, the point of this White Council meeting is not what Saruman's up to. Yes. Right. So it's okay yep. if the viewer doesn't get to the Does, reveal doesn't follow what everything Saruman that's happening. There. Right. Yeah. 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 Because it will eventually come out at the proper time much later. Yep. <clears throat> Mrs. Manrique, I agree. Gandalf is going to be totally won over. Like, Gandalf is going to leave being like, actually, that's Saruman, greatest guy ever. I want to hang out with him all the time. Like, he's going to still be, like, resisting. In some, but the thing is, he can't be suspicious. Like, he can't right. be thinking, and, man, that S Saruman is bad news. He's going And back. when Gandalf describes Saruman's, the power of Saruman's speech, you kind of get the feeling he's speaking from experience. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's true. It's yeah. true. And 
that feels very much like a fool me once, shame on you know, shame Actually, on Actually, yes, I really like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the part where it's like, oh, you can't use like the telepathy powers on other people who can do the telepathy because they like know how it works. Like, oh, you can't use your like fancy smancy voice that like lulls people into things on you know smart people who would know better it's like yes you can <laughs> right. yes you can right but you can't use it on them twice <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah once they're in the know it's possible that Gandalf does not in fact at this point yet know that this is a yes. thing that Sauron can and is willing to do to it him. It is looking back on this moment that is going to teach him about how the voice of Saruman works. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Okay. I like that. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that that's totally another thing that we need to include. I think that could be an Act 3 or an Act 2 thing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, conceivably. My biggest problem with having Act 3 be like the end notes is that I'm not sure we have four of them, but maybe. I mean, I, we, I that'll work itself out, I think, when you guys mm -hmm. are going through episode by episode. But Yeah, because yeah, we'll have to have the, hey, Aragorn, come join us. Aragorn says no, then, like, discuss with Arwen. Okay, right. actually, this is all right. Then, like, have the wrapping up of the council. Like, we'll have different aspects of it we can right. do that mm -hmm. lead up to the moment of realization of what the Estelle is. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is what and needs as to always, match. My compulsory reminder to myself that we're talking about three minutes or so of time yeah. in the whole yeah. episode. Yeah, so. that's why it's like these <laughs> For are just each little episode, pieces. Yeah. yeah. I mean yeah. you get you get you get about five to six minutes, but you know it's it's, it's not, not a lot of minutes. Many. Yeah. It's not a lot of yeah. minutes. Okay. Cool. All right. Well I think that's I, I think it's a good plan. I've 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 I <laughs> Thank you for helping me solve almost all of my. I had lots of white council problems, but I think we've 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 solved many of them anyway. Um, and I think this plan for how the white council could go makes a lot of sense. And um, and by the way, the obvious answer to the question of why is there not another white council meeting? Actually, that seems really clear. <coughs> Right. Instead of everybody walking away, just being like, well, that was a waste of time. I'm not doing that again. Right. Instead, where they end up at the end is really interesting. Right. They end up with. Um, Elrond's waiting for a sign. Elrond saying the time is not yet come, but the time will come. Yeah. Right. Mm. Galadriel and Saruman are fortifying their strongholds so that they can hold out against Saruman. Sauron and Saruman is actively wanting there to be no more meetings. So. Yes. Right. Yeah, let's Someone just else not have... talk about this ever again. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Thank yeah. You so very he leaves much. determined to never have a meeting if he can. Po he didn't want this one, right? And he surely is going to try to resist any any. Few so there'll be no impetus from him, right? Yeah. There won't be yeah. any impetus from Elrond they were until interrupting his river dredging. Right. <laughs> until the time comes. Yeah. Right. So that's it's like we're waiting for something, and until right. that happens, no more meetings. And then Council of Elrond. There's your next meeting. Okay. Exactly. Let me right. let me ask this. At what point in the timeline are the first orcs residing at Isengard? Much later than this. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you get the impression that some time was involved in that whole process. But they some, move in but, when Gandalf was there, yeah. But that um, the whole breathing, breeding the orcs with the southerners yeah. to get the orc Mm -hmm. men mixtures like obviously that takes a generation it's multiple yeah. generations there probably yeah even more so than one. so it can't be too far in the future from right. this point yeah to start that because it takes time for them to grow up and the right uh, mary remembered the southerner in brie who looked like the ones he saw in isengard mm. like so that's one of Saruman's spies who's already out right. about like and like, yeah, who is not like 14 years old. So, yes. Right. And that's where I'm going. This is, this is a, an adult man. So, yeah. Right. Time has passed. So, Aragorn is 20 right now. Mm -hmm. Well, 22 or something. Yeah. But so, 21. I don't know. About that age. <laughs> He's going to be 87 when yeah, Mary's and Bree meeting the Southerner. So, yeah. So, we're, we're getting close. It can't if, be more than a couple yeah. decades after this meeting that he starts the orc. No. Meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Which means, and that can't be like absolutely step one, like to right. begin recruiting some orcs. <laughs> you have to have orcs to breed them, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, the whole, out. yeah, so fortifying Isengard, step one. Step oh two, my gosh. get some orcs. So, yeah. so we had, um, we had a, a, a 
we found three, four, four praying mantis egg cases in our yard uh, this spring, which is amazing. One of them hatched right inside my daughter's screen of her bedroom window. It's fantastic. Anyway, and I'm thinking, like, does he, like, in 20 years time, does he go and, like, pick up a few, like, orc egg cases? and Because somebody <laughs> actually came to our house to pick up one, actually, is what made me think of this. Uh, <laughs> Like, yes, can so, I get the, the My First Orc Army, uh, you know, kit that you, kit. Where you just add water? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> he does so the mail order kit from Mordor, yeah. Insects, so no, there's I, no yes. pods involved. They're viviparous, I do believe, yes. You would yes. think, so. You would think. Um, probably not, but. <laughs> But yes, um, I but think I, step I, one, yes, fortify I agree. Step two, get some orcs. Step three, get some Dunlanders? Question I, mark. I <laughs> think we have to. I think we have to imagine that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's step one and step two, and step <coughs> two immediately follows step one. Like as soon right. as mm-hmm. it's one of the points of fortifying Isengard is so that he can do stuff in Isengard that nobody else can see because he's right. fortified it. And nobody can right. wander in or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. So, yeah. Presumably, he already has by now human people living there. Yeah. Like he has a. He's got to have a staff because he's not like. Oh yeah. Cooking no, his I think, own meals. I think um, exerting influence like over the Dunlendings had to be like step zero point five, basically. Right. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. that he could have done quietly, and no one would really have noticed. Mm-hmm. He could have disguised it as charitable activity if anyone else had yeah. asked him about it. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm helping them. I'm giving them gainful yeah. employment. You know, I'm bringing like... them the gift of civilization. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. The White Wizard's Burden, isn't it? Something like that. I knew I, that's where I saw that going. I didn't be like, Ugh. Uh-huh. I look. <laughs> that joke um, wrote itself. And it, but not only that, like, if that makes you feel uncomfortable. I'm not it sorry. <laughs> like, right. Like, considering where that goes. Like, it, it's an uncomfortable. Yeah. This is the whole thing is very, like, there is nothing about Saruman's <laughs> actions with the dead lendings <laughs> and breeding of orcs that people should not be uncomfortable with. Okay. Right. Like, the whole thing is a mess. Yeah. A big mess. Yeah. 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 Yep. Thanks, Tollers. And on that note, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, but no, I think this is good. I, I think we, I think we've got this. I think uh, again, we can uh, the, you know, we didn't map it out episode by episode, but I think no, we have but... it. We have it roughly. <clears throat> and I, I kind of want to leave you guys enough freedom to see what I, evolves I think naturally we have a as we plan to kind of do that um, to have a, like a separate script discussion that kind of centers okay. around that. Well, and even like I said, even to some extent resolving some questions kind of episode by episode as you go mm. i think yeah. is is we'll figure it out yeah we'll figure it out okay awesome. <laughs> somehow very good so speaking of figuring things out the next thing that we will be figuring out our next session will be on thursday april 11th um at our normal 10 p.m eastern time and it's we're going to be doing casting criteria so unlike last season where we did not have their very many, we had a small number of very important people to cast. Um, we have a much larger cast to cast. Yeah. Lots season. of new people, <laughs> lots of new people. So um, we will, um, it, it's so, so what we will be doing next time is the time when we think about what we would want to put on a casting call. Like what is it that we're going to be looking for? in these characters. So it's a really fun opportunity to really stop and sit down with these characters in some practical ways, which I always find really pushes us to some really interesting discussion um, in that way. So that's what's going to be happening. Casting criteria. So we'll go through the list of new characters that we have and we'll think about what we want each one to look like. And, um, and I always end up getting fixated on how tall the actors are. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, We'll we'll think about it, and we'll we'll, we'll figure out how we um, how we go how we go from there. So that's the topic next time, Thursday, April eleventh. Thanks everybody for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. And I will say as always, thanks for listening, and Godspeed. Good night now. <laughs>